<laughs> Island. Hopefully we won't sink. Hi. But uh, we've got Salve Regina hosting Endicott College in a Commonwealth Coast Conference battle. This will be the 17th meeting between the two. Salve has won the last five in a row and six of the last seven. And for the last four games, they have scored 40 or more points against this Endicott team. Salve is 0-1 in the conference, 1-3 overall. Endicott's 1-0 in the conference, 3-1 overall. So if you look at the record, you say, oh, this must be Endicott's game. But when these two get together, thing, crazy things can happen. Last year, Salve won up there 47-34. to And I, we are, I was talking to one of the Salve coaches before the game. He said, you know, it could be like that all over again. So uh, we've got ourselves a fall afternoon, 53 degrees or so. This is Salve's Fall Festival weekend, alumni weekend, homecoming weekend. There are a lot of people here. Yeah, there sure are. And, uh, and like you said, the island is absolutely a buzz. I mean, there's just people everywhere and, uh, and a beautiful afternoon with the wind blowing right at us. So it'll be uh, you know, coming across uh, as a crosswind. So we'll see how that plays out. And up in this neck of the woods at Topa Field, it is totally jammed because Bellevue Avenue has been blocked off from the top of Memorial Boulevard all the way over to East Bowery Street. The uh, car parade with some classic cars uh, paraded all the way around Ocean Drive and down the boulevard and Second Beach and back. And now they're on display on that blocked off section of Bellevue Avenue. Uh, in addition to that, just two blocks away, is the Italian festival for Festa Italiana. In addition to that, Queen Mary has uh, pulled in today with its one or 2,000 passengers, depending on how many are there. So uh, there are some people. I, had, I actually had to tunnel in. Uh, it was not Did easy. No, yeah. <laughs> I bet you that, that took you a while, yeah. especially with that little pick you used Yo. from the guy you bartered from Shawshank. From. I know. All right, let's talk about Salve. Kevin Martin, the head coach in the seventh year, career record 44 and 22. He's never had a losing season. Had his team get five postseason bowl bids, won a couple. Last year, they were 5-1 and one in the conference, 7-4 and four overall. They would lose to Bridgewater State in a New England bowl game, 34-19. Uh, last year, they were averaging 28 points a game. This year, they're averaging 27 points a game. They gave up about 25 a game this year. That was last year. This year, they're giving up 27.5 a game. The total offense per game last year, it was 375 yards. This year, 390 yards. They're giving up 355 this year, uh, pretty much the same as they did last year. So they're putting up the numbers, but they're also giving up the numbers. Yeah, and they're not, and they're not winning the way they were last year, although they got off to a slow start last year as well. But at 1-3 and three overall, they really would love a win here against a really good Endicott team. And they've got 16 starters who returned from last year. Seven of those were all conference. And that included the Offensive Rookie of the Year, Joey Moriello, the great running back. There are some key people up and down the Salve lineup, and uh, let's tell you about some of them. Yeah, Tyler McGovern is back. He's healthy, uh, and he's ready to go at 6'5", 240. He's got a strong arm. He's accurate. Wouldn't call him a mobile quarterback. Uh, he's 28 for 64, 44%. Not really what you'd like. I mean, like to be a little bit better than that for 287 yards and a touchdown. Uh, also at quarterback, Jack McGuire, sophomore, 6'5", 190. Uh, they grow him big at the quarterback slot here at Salve. 39 for 74, 53%. A little bit better, 414 yards, three touchdowns. Last week, he was 18 for 34, 211 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the running back, as Bob mentioned, Joey Moriello, sophomore, 5'8", 162. Uh, not big in stature, but he is a good one. 454 yards in 71 carries, over six yards a carry. He's got six touchdowns. Last week he had 100, 107 yards on 24 carries. Against Dean, he had 207 yards and five touchdowns. That's a month for most guys. Uh, average rushing per game, 113 and a half yards. He's joined back there by Robert Gomes, the freshman. Ronnie Martin, who is uh, not going to play. He had knee surgery this week, so uh, we're not going to see Ronnie today, at least not with a, with a jersey on. Uh, when they throw, they like to throw to Danny Hoffman, the junior. He's got 18 catches. Also, Mike Nestor, the senior, with 14. Brendan Noons, not available. Injured last week in the first quarter. He's got 12 catches, but uh, we're not going to see him either. Tight end Ryan Lawton has 10 catches. 
And uh, they're led by a big veteran offensive line. Seniors Mike Saunders at center and uh, a bunch of others. And um, shall we move on? Okay, let's keep talking about him then. Uh, Mike Saunders at center. Uh, Kyle Wisniewski, not big, but averaging 250 pounds. Tackle to tackle. Uh, on defense, they go with uh, Matt Mesner and Drew Balistrieri. Mesner is far and away the leading tackler. Number one solo tackles with 21. And uh, we won't have Mike Sylvia available for the first half of this game. Uh, he has been uh, suspended because of a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit last week. The conference rules say if you uh, call for that, you sit out the half of the next game. So we won't see Mike Sylvia, who has the team leading interceptions, until the second half. The Endicott goals are uh, led by head coach Paul McGonigal in his second year. Last year, his team uh, had their first winning season in a while for his playoff appearance, too. That was since 2013. I'm looking out. I see the captains out there for the coin toss, and helping with the coin toss is John Picozzi, who is here tomorrow to be honored going into the Salve Hall of Fame, and he tosses that coin up in the air. And let's see. It looks like Salve's won the toss, and we'll see how they declare here at midfield. They are deferring. Salve will play defense to start this game. All right, so let's see. Last year, Endicott 5-1 and one in the conference, 7-4 and four overall. So far this year, a win over Framingham State, 55-27. A win over Rochester, 28-3. A loss to Wesley, 20-17. Last week, 58-12 over Becker with 453 yards of offense. The total offense per game for Endicott, 373, almost the same as Salve. They give up about 365 yards. They rush for about 144 a game. They love to pass, averaging about 230 yards a game. This is a primarily passing team. We'll see if they maintain that, uh, that tradition this afternoon. Their quarterback is Joe Koloski. In two games, he's thrown 75% completions, 44-58 wow. for 653 yards. <laughs> 326 per game. He has eight touchdowns, only one interception. He's had some big games, including 374 yards and five touchdown passes against Framingham State. Let's take a 60-second timeout right here. We'll be right back. Corgan Financial believes everyone needs a financial plan, but perhaps it's one of life's big decisions that you... Are you soon to be concerned with paying for a college education? I'm need to provide help for aging parents. And what about you and your eventual retirement? For decision-making processes like these, that's where Corrigan Financial comes in. Every new client starts with a financial plan. Uh -oh. Team of planners, investment professionals, and support staff, including Just getting ready for the start of the game. A couple of key players here for Endicott. Running back John Kenny, about 85 yards a game. He is their primary and almost only runner to focus on. Talented wide receivers in Anthony Bracamonte, Justin McEwen, Shea McManaway, and tight end Riley Shanley, along with Zach Denike. So uh, they've got size on that offensive line. They average about 280 pounds, tackle to tackle, much bigger than Salve. Their kicker's good, too. Nick DiCarano has three of five field goal attempts. His long is 47. I just saw him practicing, and he hit one from 45. So that's a threat as well. Well, I'll tell you, it's a gamble when you give the ball to Endicott to start the game. Their offense is high-powered, but if Salve can get a stop, you know, hold them to no points on this first drive, they could kind of gain a quick advantage. Let's see if that can happen. Anthony DeSanto will kick it off for the Seahawks in their home blue jerseys and blue helmets with silver pants. All white, the road uniforms for Endicott. The kickoff from DeSanto is a line drive kick fairly deep and taken on the 10-yard line. 
He's up to the 15. He's hanging wide to the right, left side, looking for blocks. Head towards his near sideline. He's got good blocking, on, good blocking on the sideline and gets over the 40 yard line. That's a nice return out there for uh, Endicott. And that's Anthony Bracamonte. Boy, you hate to give him good field position, but that's exactly what they're going to get. Starting somewhere near the 40, looks like it's going to be at about the 38 yard line. We are, of course, up in the press box at Topa Field. We're right behind the Salve bench. On the far side, you've got the Endicott Gulls, and first and 10 are the Gulls at their own 38-yard line. Led by quarterback Joe Koloski in the shotgun formation. Puts a man in motion to the right side. Awaits the snap. Gets it, and hand off to Kenny, looking for a little bit of running room. He doesn't take up a lot of room. He stopped at the 40-yard line. John Kenny is a five foot six. 165 pound sophomore out of Wilmington, Mass, but he's tough to bring down with that stature of his. Similar in ways uh, to Joey Moriello, who's just a little bit bigger for Salve. When you throw 75% completion, you almost use your passing game like a running game. You could, you know, you when you're that highly successful. Double wides, left and right, snap. Koloski back to pass, throws over the middle, and it's in and out of the arms of the intended receiver. That was uh, right across the middle, Zach Denyck was the intended receiver. It was almost thrown behind him as he cut across the middle. And also it was uh, kind of bounced up and it almost reached the Salve defensive players. There were three of them behind him, but it fell to the ground harmlessly, almost picked. Ball at the 40. Big play here. Third and eight. Again, the spread formation in the shotgun. Man in motion goes to the right side. All alone in the backfield is Kolaski. Blitz. They got him. And they got him. Ball comes loose. It's downfield. It's up for grabs. Picking it up and rolling down and inside the 15-yard line. What a hit on the blitz by Salve. Zach Katerius got in there, jarred it loose, and chased it down. Koloski never saw Zach coming. Blitzed him from the right side of that defensive unit, and Salve's first and 10 at, their, at the 14 of Endicott. Big play right there. Let's see if the Seahawks can capitalize. That was a major league fumble as that thing went back like about 22 yards. Tyler McGovern in the shotgun formation. Double wides left and right. Moriello in the backfield. Pass goes on the right side. It's caught on the 10 and falling forward to about the 9 is the receiver. That looks like Nestor, and it is Mike Nestor on the receiving end. He set up wide right, went down about five yards, grabbed the pass, and got it just inside the 10 for a second down and a little more than four on the far side hash mark. They go right to left to the Seahawks. McGovern with the snap. Moriello looking for a hole, finds one, and gets into the end zone. Dances his way right, jukes to the left, and scurries into the end zone. Joey Moriello from about nine yards out. Touchdown, Salve. Well, you cannot have a better start than Salve has. On defense, they cause a major turnover. And two plays later, Joey Moriello from the nine. Salve, 6-0. On for the extra point, Angelo DeSanto. Who's been pretty accurate in that department. Snap, ball down, kick is on the way. And the kick is good. As quickly as that, early first quarter, Seahawks cause a turnover and turn it into a touchdown, 7-0 Salve. We'll be right back after this. Moriello with the touchdown, 7-0 Salve. 
DeSanto's line drive kick is deeper this time, taken at the six-yard line. This is Bracamonte again, trying to go far side to his left, trying to pick up a wall of blockers, gets some over there, and gets right back to close where he was first time <laughs> Very over similar. the 35-yard line. Very similar run back. Anthony Bracamonte, he's a freshman, and he's speedy. All right, Endicott tries again. They've got that big front line. Endicott center is Andrew Tadino. He goes 6 feet, 285. The guards, Isaiah Gibbs, 6'3", 285. Matt Hughes, 6'3", 280. Boy, this really does look like the first drive. Right at the same spot. From just inside the 39, back to pass, Koloski looking. He's got time, dropped it down, and it falls incomplete. That was about his third option, I think, on the play, and he missed the mark. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Salve is ready for this passing game. They're getting pressure on the quarterback, and the receivers see appear to be covered. Salve showing them right now a three-man front. They normally operate with four. Now they show, nope, still a three-man front on second down and ten. Kenny is the halfback alongside the quarterback in the shotgun. The pass goes on the far side. It is caught and pushed out of bounds right away is Shea McManaway. It'll pick up about half of the 10 yards as they mark the forward progress to the 30, excuse, yeah, the 38-yard line. Oh, I guess the original line of scrimmage was the 33. I guess so. So it's third and five. Endicott looking for its first first down, finding themselves trailing early. 7-0. Trips to the right side. Single wide left. Shotgun formation. Here comes the blitz again by Salve, and this time they jumped. And into the neutral zone they went, and that five yards would likely result in a first down or be very close. Looks like it's going to be just a tad short if, it, if the chains are right. But uh, Salve kind of gambling there, wanting to get in that backfield, and that time they just did it a little too soon. Don't see anything being marked off. Hello. There it is. Okay. There's the walk. Finally, they do mark off the five. Looks like they're going to be about a half yard to a yard short, although Endicott is pointing like it's a first down. Well, you might be they're saying, let's move the chains, Endicott saying. Salve saying. But uh, no, not quite. It's nope. a yard. Right. Third and one. See if John Kenny gets the call. Now a little timeout called over here by the head linesman, is, who is uh, Pat Rahilly. The referee is Craig McDonald. Trying to check the chains. Ken Bidlack and crew over there. And now they say it is a first down. Wow. Huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> little indecision there. Kevin Gilmartin is questioning the head linesman over here. But it's going to be first and 10 goals after the offside by Salve. Line of scrimmage now, the 43-yard line of Endicott. Kyle Lachlan starting in the secondary right now. The Middletown High School grad for Salve. Koloski's going to throw over the middle, and it will be caught. Riley Shanley picks it off and falls forward to about the 49-yard line as they are doing the short pass routes right here, about five yards down and slanting across. Really, it's like, it's like their running game. No huddle. Right to the line of scrimmage for the goals, going left to right in the all-white uniforms. Koloski in the shotgun, puts trips to the right. Man in motion goes left, misdirection. Goes right up the middle. Picks up the first down and more for John Kenny. Gets just over the Salve 40-yard line. Nice bit of misdirection there by the Gulls. Down to the 40-yard line of Salve. And boy, are they moving quickly now. Quick pass over on the far side as Bracamonte, and he breaks one tackle, falls forward to about the 35 in the hurry-up style of the Gulls. Trying to catch that Salve defense off guard. Forward progress just outside the 35. It'll be second down, call it five, for the Gulls. Trying to get back after falling behind early 7-0. We're still early in the opening quarter. Trips to the right. This time it's Kenny with a handoff up the middle. He slowed down and brought down after a gain of about two yards. In early on the tackle was Suki Singh. Now it's third down and... About two. In Salve territory at the 32-yard line. Kenny again caught in the backfield. Brought down for a loss. Great penetration that time by Jack Gulfy. 
got into the backfield to stop John Kenny and push him to a loss back to the 35 and bring up a fourth down. Are they, are they gonna are they gonna kick a field goal? No, they'll punt. They're going to punt, apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Neil Perry is the punter. So Salve will be inside their own 10, waiting for this punt, if indeed it happens. Now look out for a fake here. Inside the 35-yard line. Long snap count. They're See waiting. if they can get him to jump. That's what they're trying to do. Low snap, but it's there, and so's the punt. It gets away. That's a good one. And this will hit on the far side and go into the end zone for a touchback. I thought it was going to angle out of bounds, but it went to the end zone. So Salve's defense holds pretty deep in their own territory. They get it back. They're ahead 7-0, and the offense goes to work again. Tyler McGovern and crew to take over. Tyler center is one of the captains, Mike Saunders. The guards are Stephen Dewey and Kyle Wisniewski. The tackles are Elian Telford and Peter Noonan. Well, a little different field position for Salve this time, starting at their own 20. Last time they started at the Endicott 14. Tyler in the shotgun, Moriello behind him. And it will be Joey, nope, play fake. Now a pass to Joey Moriello in the middle. Breaks, gets free of one tackle, gets up to about the 28 yard line before he is brought down. Nice maneuvering there by Joey Moriello, brought down by Alan Gibson from the safety position. It'll be second and two, Salve at their own 28. Little screen pass that time to Moriello, very effective. Same formation, double wides left and right, and the pass wide open on the right for first down is complete. And it looks like Nestor 22, I believe. Yep, that's Mike Nestor. Set up wide right, just went about two yards downfield, turned around and caught the pass. Needed two, got three, first down. At their own 31, Salve on the move from right to left as we look down. Led by Tyler McGovern, the six foot five, 240 pound junior quarterback. Puts double wides or in the slot formation on the right side, single wing over here on the left. And it will be Moriello trying to go off tackle on that left side, short yardage. And gets out close to the 35 yard line. Joey Moriello, 5'8 sophomore, 160 pounds out of Colts Neck, New Jersey. It'll be second down and about six. First quarter action, Salve scoring early, creating a turnover, turning it into a TD. Trips to the left side in this formation, man in motion to the left is Moriello. Pump fake by McGovern, throws it out of play to the Salve sideline as that uh, little pass out here in the flat was covered very, very efficiently. Well, they tried the pump fake and then send him, you know, down the sideline, but he lofted the pass and it kind of went out of bounds. It was not really that great a throw, but good coverage. It was intended originally for Joey Moriello, but there was a defender in the way. So Tyler had to wait a bit and threw it out of bounds. Third down, six, snap. McGovern looking over the middle, and it Oof. is going to be knocked loose from Ryan Lawton. A jarring hit from Kevin O'Brien. Lawton had it momentarily, but that is when Kevin O'Brien arrived and knocked it loose. Yeah, you could see him coming clean across the middle. The throw was right there, but boy, was the hit there as well. So on to punt is Angelo DeSanto, and back deep is the dangerous Mr. Bracamonte. Line of scrimmage is the Salve 35-yard line. Snap, rush, kick is good. High, very high, fair catch call by Bracamonte at his own 30-yard line. An effective punt by Angelo DeSanto, no return. So the goals go back to work. Endicott from Beverly, Massachusetts. Coming in at 3-1 and one overall compared to Salve's 1-3 and three overall, but this is a key conference game here, especially for Salve, who already has one conference loss. All right, back to work goes Joe Koloski, one of the captains of this goal squad. Sends Kenny, the running back, wide to the right side in the trips formation. Snap, pass goes over there to Kenny. Kenny can't tell it, he dropped it. And he would have been caught right away anyway by John Good. 
and the quarterback got hit again. So they're making him uh, aware of their presence, and he had to get rid of that ball in a hurry. Second down and 10. Because of the absence of Mike Sylvia here in the first half, being suspended for that half, Ty O'Loughlin of Middletown High School is in the starting secondary for Salve. Helping out along with John Good. Shotgun, snap, pass on the far side is caught. And there's a bit of running room, but Salve bunches it up and brings him down. And the receiving end was Zach Denight. So the forward progress is brought up to about the 38-yard line, which means it's going to be third and two here for Endicott going left to right. Four completions to four different receivers. Setting up in the shotgun as usual is Koloski. No huddle. Double wides to the right. Wing back to the right. Man in motion to the right. Hand off to the man in motion. Bracamonte is going to be caught for a loss. John Good got there, but the original pressure was applied by Nick Pellucci. And the great lateral mobility of the Salve defense comes through with a loss back to the 35. So it'll be fourth down, and the Gulls will have to punt again. Neil Parry goes back to work. And back is Justin Gentorno for the Seahawks. Standing at his own 30. Here's this snap. It's a low line drive kick, a spiral that's going to roll to the 35 of Salve and stop it around the 32. So Salve gets it back. They lead 7-0. If you joined us late, Salve sack resulted in a fumble. Salve ended up deep in Endicott territory, and Joey Moriello took it in from the 9. And that's the touchdown that Salve has. And the defense has been so far superb. All right. Salve's offense goes back to work. Danny Hoffman and Mike Nestor will be split out wide to the right side in this formation with a slot over here on the left side. Moriello, the lone back, right off the shoulder of Tyler McGovern in the shotgun. And it will be Joey Moriello. Cuts inside. What a race move. At the 40. Slowed down. Brought down. No, still on his feet. At near midfield before he's gang tackled. That's what Joey Moriello is all about. He is not big. He's just tough. And he knows how to run. Forward progress to the 49 of Salve. My goodness. He finds this the slightest seam to run through and then makes some moves that gets those defenders going the wrong way. 17-yard pickup, first down for Salve. Slot formation to the right side. Danny Hoffman is the slot back. <clears throat> Four-man front here for the goal. Snapped to McGovern, yeah, a lot movement, of movement up on the front line. Yeah, that, that just didn't work. Let's see who moved first. Was it a false start or a neutral zone? Uh, I think it's a false start. Yep, going to go back five yards here against Salve. And Slow down that momentum to the 44 for first to 15. Sam Opont is on that front line for Endicott, 6'1", 275. Tom LaRusso, one of the captains, 6'1", 245. James Lewis, an end, 6 feet 230. And Grayson Maddox, another captain, 5'10", 200. Usually the front four for Endicott. All right, double slots. Snap, McGovern looking left, throwing left, Oof. too high. Intended for Pat Travers on the near side in front of the Salve bench. Pat goes six feet four, but it was just a little too high for him. He's six four, the pass was seven four. <laughs> so it'll be second down in 15, Salve at their own 44 yard line. But what Salve has to be very satisfied with right now is their defense and how they're sort of dictating the tempo of this game a little bit. Leading tacklers on this Gulls defense are the linebackers, Kevin O'Brien and Tim Russell. Kevin a sophomore, Tim a junior. Hoffman in motion to the right side, snap to McGovern. Looking, little toss and intercepted. Thrown right to the Endicott Gulls. Right there to pick it off is Hakeem Fleming, I believe. Number 27, yep, that's Hakeem Fleming with the pick on the attempted screen pass. Oof. He looked like the intended receiver. Yeah, that, that one is one you're going to have to go and try to explain to somebody because that was, that was as ugly as it gets. 
So now it's Endicott first and 10 at the Salve 31 yard line. Salve commits a big turnover. Let's see if the goals can capitalize like the Seahawks did. Trips split out wide to the left side. Koloski exclusively from the shotgun formation. Has Anthony Whiteley next to him now in the backfield. Snap, drop, throw, sideline, and incomplete. A lot of contact between the intended receiver and the defender. On the defending side of that was Justin Jantorno. And he was battling the intended receiver on that play. And that would be Justin McEwen. And again, we just talked about how, the, how well the Salve defense has played. Well, they've been dealt a bad hand right here as uh, Endicott has it at the Salve 31. Let's see what they can do with this. All right, we have double wides to the left, wing back left, out of that shotgun formation. Koloski gets the snap, play fake, back to pass, being pressured, and he's going down. Yeah. Wrapped up right away by Zach Katerius. And that's his second sack of the afternoon already for Zach, who comes out of Sandwich Mass, a sophomore. And I'll tell you, give, give the defensive coaches some credit. They saw that there were some soft spots in the middle, and they are just shooting people at this quarterback. And he just does not have the time to do what he usually does. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Salve up 7-0. Third down, about 15 at the Salve 36-yard line. Trips to the left. Long snap count. There's the snap. Here's the throw over on the far side. And tripped up is Bracamonte. He'll get back most of the five yards on that sack, but that's about it. It'll bring up fourth down and about 11 and let's see if the goals will punt again from this position of the field. Nope, they're going to give their field goal kicker, Nick DiCarano, a chance. They're going to put it down at the 39-yard line. It's a 49-yard attempt, and that is his longest. I beg your pardon, 47 is his longest. So this is, is an attempt for two more yards. Well, here we go. Snap, kick. It's not going to make it. It's going to be short. By about five or eight yards. No good on that field goal attempt. Salve will get the ball back and the defense comes through again. Seven nothing Salve, 4-12 left first quarter. Boy, I'll tell you, this defense has come to play. They have, they have played so well, really, all afternoon. And it's early, obviously, only still the first quarter, but boy, they've played well. They'll take over, not will the offense though, at the 32 yard line, and Tyler McGovern was just given a get out of jail free card uh, after that bad interception. He gets to come back right out. First and 10, Salve still going right to left in this opening quarter, sun drenched afternoon with a slight breeze across the field. Moriello gets the handoff, wants to go wide, breaks one tackle, spinning, turning, gets back to the line of scrimmage and picks up maybe a yard after that as he is finally brought down by several of the goals. That's the most impressive two-yard gain you're ever going to see. Grayson Maddox was among those who finally brought him down. But Joey got one, second and nine. Up on that front line, Stephen Dewey is doing a good fill-in job here, a freshman from Plymouth Mass. He's 6'3", 280, working that left side along with Peter Noonan. Tyler McGovern, big tall junior quarterback, takes the snap and Oof. is going to give it to Joey who stopped in the backfield. Great penetration that time by Tim Russell, the leading tackler on this team from his linebacking position, pushes Joey back to the 30-yard line, a loss of three. Oh boy, now, they're, now their defense is starting to step up. They know they want to go to Moriello. They want Joey to touch the ball as much as possible. And right now, Endicott is keying on him. Again, Tyler McGovern is big and tall, not that mobile. Chances are he's not going to be able to scramble too much if he has to. He's got to look and find those receivers. Double wides, wide to the right. Play fake. McGovern stops, looks, play fakes, and gets Ooh. it over there to Danny Hoffman, who makes the catch, who gets the first down, and is brought down at midfield. Well... You know what happened that time is the defender decided to go for the ball and he kind of just whiffed on it a little bit. And the ball got to Hoffman and a big gain to midfield. Jesse Simone missed out on the tackle and it's first and 10, Salve. Midfield it is. 
Wing pass out here to Hoffman. Gets a nice block. Gets free down to about the 45. About a five-yard pickup that time for Danny Hoffman. Danny is all of five foot six, 160-pound junior out of Trumbull, Connecticut, and the top receiver on this team, along with Brendan Nunes, who is not available today because of an injury. Nestor and Danny Hoffman wide to the right in this formation. No huddle. They're at the 45 of Endicott, second and five. This time it's Moriello trying the right side. Sees a little bit of a seam, drives forward, and gets close to the first down, but I think he stood up just before the first down near the 40-yard line. Yeah, he's going to be a yard short, but again, for a, for a guy his size, he can push the pile. Third and one. I think Tim Russell got in there to help make a, another stop. And it leaves Salve with a third and one at the 41 of Endicott. Now we're late in the first quarter. Minute 25 to go. It'll be Moriello with a run. He's trying to go yep. off to the left, right tackle, uh, left tackle rather. He got pushed back. The question is his forward progress, I think, is going to come up a little bit short. I don't even think he got the line of scrimmage, honestly. No, they give him the line of scrimmage just, well, maybe. Almost of a half yard or so. Yeah. It's a fourth down and almost two. Well, they're not showing punt. I'm not sure. I think I might here. Well, I see Robert Gomes come into the backfield right now. Moriello is on the sidelines. Look out for Robert Gomes. He's a powerful little 5'8", 185-pounder. And Kevin Gilmartin will call a timeout. And it was a flag on the play, but I don't know if that was a delay of game or the timeout was called before. Yeah, he's putting it back in his pocket. So Kevin Gilmartin takes a timeout to avoid the delay of game, has a quick chat with Tyler McGovern and a couple of the receivers. We're also going to see Joe Hyland come in. It'll be a double tight end formation. He and Ryan Lawton share that joke. Oh, did they mark off the... Yeah, it's back where... Uh, oh, they did mark off five yards. Oh, so this is long. So it's a punt by McGovern. And nobody's back there. And this one will bounce and go into the end zone. It hit inside the five. So they did mark off a five-yard penalty. There was apparently not a timeout. So it will be Endicott's ball with... Just 21 seconds to go in this first quarter. 7-0 Salve on the early touchdown by Joey Moriello. So going back to work is Joe Koloski. Six pounds out of Plymouth, Connecticut. Sets up on the far side hash mark with trips out here on the right side. Kenny back in the backfield alongside Koloski. And it goes to Kenny. And Kenny is caught in the backfield and brought down. Great penetration by Salve Regina. That'll probably end the first quarter. Oh, somebody is a little shaken up, too. I think that was Suki Singh who got in there very quickly. Picked yeah. up about three yards, or two yards, maybe. So we have uh, time stopped here with 12 seconds left. Down on the ground is big guard and uh, Matt Hughes, 6'3", 280-pound junior out of Hanover, Mass., sitting up and being checked out. The ball is at the 20, inside the 22 of Endicott, where it'll be second down and a little more than 12. Huge crowd on hand here for this one, and I know many of them are from Endicott's neck of the woods up there in Massachusetts, but most of them are here for Salve's uh, Fall Festival weekend, Alumni weekend, Homecoming weekend. Parents weekend? Parents weekend. All wrapped up into one. And it shows because the bleachers are packed. Down on the field, up against the fence. Lined here on the near side. And Matt Hughes is going to be helped off the field, I believe. No, he's, oh, no, he's on, his, on own, his own. On his own power, you're right. With a limp. Second down. We'll call it 12. Endicott at their own 22-yard line. Salve's had a lot of success penetrating that offensive line to get into the backfield a few times. Trips again out wide. This is a handoff, and breaking one tackle was Kenny, but not ever the rest of them. Oh boy, There's okay. about five Seahawks there to finish off the tackle. Well, that's what happens when you have one runner. You only have one guy to worry about, and... Uh, that does mark the end of the first quarter. So far, so good for Salve. They lead 7-0. 
We'll take a 30-second break right here and be right back. Back in 1980, Ralph and Pat Plum envision owning and operating a restaurant. Full house backfield here with backs on either side of Koloski. Another big play by the defense here. Salve looking to blitz, does not go offside. Long snap, count snap. Back is Koloski looking over here on the near sideline, and it is caught. Great, Great throw. pass. Tough defense by Justin Jantorno, but right into the waiting arms of Endicott. Uh, Shea McManaway. That is the best throw he's made today. They were step for step. Justin turned around at the last minute to see if he could get a hand on it, but it went right into the waiting arms of Shea McManaway, the sophomore. First and 10, Endicott now at their own 47-yard line. Pass out on the flat to the right side. It's Bracamonte brought down before he can get to the line of scrimmage. That was a terrific move by Hayden Pereira to get there and make the stop for a loss. Boy, I'll tell you, Salve's defense is playing extremely well. Loss of about three yards on the play, maybe even a little more, second and 13. Just inside the Endicott 44-yard line. They go right to left now as we look down. Salve up, 7-0 early second quarter. Koloski makes the quick pass in the flat to Bracamonte again. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles, and is brought down just over the 45-yard line. And in there to make the terrific stop was uh, John Good, I believe, got there first. I'll tell you something, Salve's defense is playing with a purpose too. I mean, they are hitting people. Short gain to the 46. First down marker is in Salve territory at the 43. The ball at the 46 of Endicott. Third and 11, trips to the right. Single wide left. Kenny in the single set backfield. Koloski with the long snap count again. Finally gets it, straight drop, short drop, throwing over on the wing, there he is again. Complete pass inside the Salve 35 yard line to Shea McManaway. He was wide open that time. Well, there's a, there's a matchup they're gonna have to keep their eye on now. Right up to the line of scrimmage, go the Gulls. Snap, handoff, Kenny looking for some room, goes up the middle for about five yards before he is brought down. Pellucci in there to make the stop, but that guy who got there first is Drew Balistrieri. Captain and linebacker, again, no huddle. Quick offense, Koloski looking to pass, throws on the near sideline, McMahon away, makes another catch, down around the five yard line. And having a tough time covering McMahon away is Justin Gentorno, the senior. Two straight passes to McMahon away there, first and goal. At the five yard line. Pass in the end zone, tipped up and then caught. Touchdown, penalty flag, well. Touchdown and a penalty flag. Let's see which way this goes. It was deflected by the Salve defender in the air and it was caught. I don't know by who. It's a defensive holding call against Salve. The touchdown stands. Who caught that pass? Who caught it? Thank, Thank you. you, Mick Manaway. Of course. <laughs> so this time it was Koloski 
to Shea McManaway three times. Third time for the touchdown. On for the extra point, Nick De DeCarano. And Nick puts it up, and it is good. So the Endicott Gulls are back early in the second quarter. Marching right downfield very effectively, especially behind the arm of Joe Koloski and the hands of Shea McManaway. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Be right back with you. Newport Propane and the Sherman family have been All right, Endicott for the kickoff. Following the touchdown that ties it at seven. Fake on the onside by the kicking team. Settling back into regular formation. And Salve Regida awaits. Justin Jantrono is usually back there. He's got some help. This one is coming down toward Justin. He'll take it at the 10. Looking for running room. Gets to the 20 and stop before he can get to the 25-yard line. Good coverage on that play. And right now you can kind of feel a little click of momentum shift toward Endicott right now. And I and think uh, uh, Justin's on the ground. Yeah, he got hit pretty good. Now he gets up under his own power. Been a tough first half here for Justin, especially defensively. 23 yard line is where they're gonna start. So we're even at seven. I really didn't think it was gonna be the Salve holding Endicott scoreless for this afternoon. No, but I'll tell you, that was like a lightning. It was just bang, bang, bang. Three quick plays, and they were in the end zone. It was a nine-play drive, but the, the last four plays really got them going. From their own 23, Salve left to right. Snap to McGovern. Hand off to Moriello, trying to go up the middle, and just Goodness pulling his way gracious. forward to the 34-yard line. <laughs> Joey Moriello, his dad sits right in front of us every time. You can see his dad's a strong guy. Pick up 10 yards. I think they're going to have to move the, yes, they will. Move the chains first down. You know, he's running into a crowd of blockers and defenders, and he's pushing the whole pile upfield. I mean, you can understand him sort of slivering between the, the cracks, but he's pushing the pile at this at that size. 5'8", 160. Snap. Moriello doesn't see anything where he's supposed to go, so he tries to ad-lib and can't break away. Great job that time by uh, the goals to stop him. And in leading that charge was big number 90, Sam Opont, along with Tim Russell, the linebacker. We're gonna, you're going to hear Tim Russell's name a lot. You're, it was almost that time as though uh, McGovern was going to hand it off to one side of him and Joey was on the other. It just, just didn't look right. And uh, he picked up a yard. It'll be second and nine. Ball at the 33 of Salve. And McGovern to pass, throws near sideline. It's Nestor with the catch, but he's tackled right away. And before he can get to the 40 yard line, excellent coverage that time by Jesse Simone out of East Greenbush, New York. Salve goes right up to the line of scrimmage. Similar types of offense here. No huddles, get up there, run the play. Ryan Lawton's going to set up as a wide out rather than a tight end. He'll be in the slot on the left side. Hoffman's the slot on the right side. This is a big play. Third down, about four. McGovern wants to throw. Out on the wing, it's caught. And a nice move oh, and yes. diving toward the first down marker is Joey Moriello. Just slid away from the tackle that might have stopped him shy of that first down. That tackle nearly made by Mitty Squally. But Joey Moriello's moves get a first down for Salve at the 44-yard line in Salve territory. Almost a safe bet. You get it out to him in the open. He's going to beat one guy. Trips to the right. Moriello in the backfield. Off the right shoulder of Tyler McGovern. Single wide out to the left. And it will be a quick pass over here toward Nestor, but overthrown in uh, Endicott territory around the 45, but well overthrown from Mike Nestor, who comes out of Danvers, Mass., six-footer, 170-pound senior. Not only is it overthrown, but he, he's kind of lobbing those out there. They're taking forever to get out to the flat, and uh, 
Those are easily going to be picked off if that was in uh, in bounds. Second and ten. Trips to the right. Moriello in the backfield. And it will be a handoff to Joey. Trying to find blocking on the left side. Finds some. Turns the corner and gets pushed out of play in front of the Endicott bench. But not before he got a first down at the 45 of Endicott. I'll tell you, before this young man graduates, he's going to he's gonna turn a lot of record books around. And he is really special. Helping lead the blocking over on that left side was Pete Noonan, the 6'1", 250-pound junior out of Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Salve first and 10 in the 7-7 tie. McGovern, quick look and pass. Nestor has it and will be brought down immediately. His forward progress took him to the 40 and a five-yard gain. Carvered very quickly out there by Simone again with some help as well from Medi Squally. Second down and five. Salve moving left to right in the Endicott territory. Pat Travers out wide left along with Hoffman. Wide outs over here on the right as well. And it will be Moriello caught in the backfield, brought down in the backfield. Great penetration that time by Hakeem Fleming. Well, everybody knows who, who they want the ball to go to. And a loss of a yard on the play. It's going to be third and six. Ball at the 41 of Endicott. Even Joey needs a block or two. Looking to the sidelines for the play. Signaled in. It's taking a long time. On third down and about six. Plenty of time on the play clock. Under 10 seconds now. Snap. McGovern throwing and it is oh. deflected. Almost <laughs> caught by Mike Nestor on the deflection. Tim Russell nearly picked it off. It'll be fourth down. It went through one player's hands right into the other and that went then to the ground. It was close. Now we're at fourth and six. I don't know. Are they going to have Tyler kind of do his quick punt thing again? Probably. Tyler McGovern sets up his looking like a shotgun. It looks like a play on fourth down and six at the 41. And McGovern's punt is high and fairly short. Fair catch called for at the six-yard line. So Endicott will start deep in their own territory. That punt taken by Kyle, I'm sorry, Joe Padgett. Joe Padgett on the receiving end. So it's 7-7. We're getting near the midway point of the second quarter. And let's see if the goals try to go right back to that combination of Koloski to McManaway, which very much resulted in a touchdown yeah. last time around. Yeah, right now McManaway has five catches for uh, 76 yards. Six foot sophomore sets up wide out here on the left side. And Koloski goes back to the shotgun formation. Bracamonte in motion to the right side. Snap, play fake, out on wide it goes and incomplete Bracamonte, the intended receiver. Ty O'Loughlin there to break it up on the right side. Yeah, somebody took a block and just got crunched. Uh, but, uh, but again, that ball was shake, uh, shaken loose and incomplete. Second down and 10 for the Gulls at their own seven. The Tyle Lachlan fan club is, is here, I think. <laughs> I would think so. And you can see how much the passing game means to the Gulls, even deep in their own territory. They're not afraid to throw. Trips to the right. Handoff this time goes uh -oh. up the middle. And there's a hole. And there's a first down. That time it's Whiteley. Anthony Whiteley, the ball carrier. And he found a hole on that left side and got through it quickly to the 23, almost 24-yard line. Snap, handoff. This time it's Whiteley again. This time he's wrapped up very quickly by Drew Ballister, Ballistrieri along with Matt Messner. No gain, well, about a yard maybe. They mark it up to the 26-yard line. The second down and nine. Right to the uh, line they go, no huddle. Slots left and right. It's still Whiteley in the backfield, alongside the quarterback, Koloski. Short drop to pass, looking, nothing on the near side. Rolls to the right side, throws on the run, and it is out of bounds. It should be incomplete. And there's a holding call on the play anyway. There is a holding against Endicott after the incompleted pass. Interesting decision. Yeah, it'll be, the, be third in about eight or second and about 18. 
Now that Salve says, let's take it and push him back. I don't blame him. Initially, they were going to decline it. Now they say, let's push him back half the distance to the goal. Spot foul from about the 26. It'll go back to about the 16, where it'll be, again, third down. I'm sorry, second down and about 18. They put it at the 16-yard line. First down marker at the 34. And with trips out wide to the right side, Koloski goes back to work for the shotgun. Whiteley gets the handoff, finds a little bit of a hole, gets to the 21, wrapped up very quickly by Drew Pat Balistrieri. And that'll set up a third down and long, right up to the line come the goals, though. Slight change of personnel. Kenny comes back in the backfield. Bracamonte comes out, so they'll use a dual back backfield. And it's, a, it's third and long, though. Third down and 13, the ball at the 21. Salve could use a little pressure on the quarterback. They're showing a three-man front. Double wides to the right. Koloski, as usual, shotgun formation. Gets the snap, two-step drop. Looking on the near side toward McManaway, and a penalty flag will be thrown on John Good. McManaway got pushed over the sideline in front of the Salve bench. Too much contact that time by John Good and an easy pass interference call. And he had good coverage too. I don't think that pass was gonna be completed, but he really did put his hands all over the receiver. So it's gonna be a 15 yard penalty, I believe, and a first down. He needed 13. Penalty is marked off in college from the line of scrimmage. So it puts the ball at the 34 yard line, and that's a first down. We gotta move those chains. Just barely, considering they it was a uh, yeah. third and 16, right? Yeah, it was at the 21, so yeah. I don't know how so we get to the 34. First and 10. Double slot, back to pass. Koloski looking over the middle. Wide open, Bracamonte at the 40 to the far sideline. Knocked off his feet as he gets to about the 43. And that's Ty O'Loughlin running over to catch up to Anthony Bracamonte. Pick up of about nine on the play, I believe. They mark it at the 43, second and one. Salve defense is not ready. Here's the snap. Whiteley has it. First down, right side. Wrapped up and uh, brought down pretty quickly by Zach Katerius, but not to stop a first down. Hurry up offense here by Endicott. First and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Second quarter action, 5.25 to go, 7-7 seven, seven tie. Slot formation to the left. Play fake, back to pass, Koloski. Double pumps, throws oh. over the middle and almost picked off and caught by Endicott. Bracamonte inside the 20, catches the deflection. Well, they scored a touchdown on a deflection. This time they get a huge first down. Nearly picked off by Salve and a, for a stroke of good fortune here for the Gulls who go right up to the line of scrimmage. And movement, false start. It's going to slow things down a bit here for Endicott. Well, we're starting to see some of that explosive passing game now. That was a 36-yard pickup. So they put it back at the 22, it looks like. First down, 15. Snap, quick toss to Bracamonte, left wing. Knocked off his feet very effectively by John Good, I believe. Yep. John got there at the 25-yard line for a loss on the play. So it'll be second down now, and the ball sitting on the 25. First down marker inside the 10 near the 8. Gulls trying to take the lead here in a 7-7 tie with just over four minutes to go before halftime. Whiteley is the back alongside the quarterback. Shifts over to the left side, back to pass. Koloski looking for time, throws over the middle. There's Bracamonte again, trying to find some open room. Gets away from one tackler, gets stopped at the 20-yard line. Man who slowed him down to uh, kind of bust up the play was Salve's Justin Gentorno. Them to five, the 20. Five yards to the 20. Third down and about 13. The goals in Salve territory. Going to send trips out over to the right side. 
Pulaski checks his wristband. He's got Whiteley, Anthony Whiteley on his left side. Trips wide to the right. And it will be Kalaski pitching. Whiteley has it and is going to be dragged down. Great job that time by Zach Katerius. Terrific penetration by the sophomore from Sandwich Mass. I think we'll see a field goal now. That gets them to about the 17. Pickup of three on the run. We're going to look at a field goal, I'm pretty sure. Nick DiCarano is on to attempt his second field goal. He tried a 49-yarder that came up short. It'll be 34 this time. He's set up right at the 24. DiCarano has the ball down, and the ball is on the way, and it is good just inside the left upright. Close but good. So Endicott takes the lead 10 to 7 with 3.03 to go in the half. We'll take a 30 second break right here. That's exactly what I am. Okay. Stanley owned and operated since 19. I'm sorry, I, I know I faked you out, Art. information about community partners, stop by Clements Courtesy Desk. And welcome back. As Endicott gets ready to kick off after registering the field goal. Well, with three minutes to go in the half, Salve has that option, uh, that opportunity, I should say, of hopefully trying to get a score before halftime and then getting the ball back for the second half. Of course, they get three minutes and a long way to go. Hard line drive kickoff coming down to Justin Gentorno with the eight. Looking for blockers on the near side. Can't find enough of them. Gets just over the 20-yard line. And that's where Salve will have to start this drive. They have their three timeouts. They've got just shy of three minutes to go before the half. Let's see what they can do. Well, that was an 11-play, 76-yard drive. Uh, Di Carano with a 34-yard field goal. That was... Uh, Good by a long margin. I mean, he really belted that thing. Although it was just inside the right upright, it had plenty of distance. Savvy starts at the 22-yard line. Tyler McGovern and the offense go back to work. Joey Moriello, the single setback alongside the shotgun quarterback. And here is McGovern throwing quickly over to Mike Nestor on the near sideline. He's spun around and brought down before he can get out of bounds. And once again, Jesse Simone is there to cover the play. Gain on that play out to about the 27. Pickup of five, almost five. Second down a little bit less than six here. Caw continues to run. McGovern with the handoff to Moriello. Finds a little bit of blocking and then it's covered up and stopped very effectively by the big guy, Sam Opont, and then the linebacker, Kevin O'Brien. Ball is resting at the 31. That causes a third down and a yard and a half. And coming on to add to the blocking scheme rather than a tight end receiving scheme would be Joe Highland, six foot four, 220 pound sophomore. Salve kind of, I think they changed the play just then. Danny Hoffman, the only split to the left side and it will be Moriello going right up the middle for a first down. Got about three or four yards. Terrific hole opened up there. Mike Saunders, the center, had a lot to do with that. Now there's a clock to worry about. Of course, they'll stop it to move the chains. I assume they're moving the chains. They are. Goes out to the 33-yard line. Yes. First and 10 for Salve. Minute 30 to go in the half. 10-7 Endicott. McGovern to Nestor. Quick, short pass. Simone right there to wrap up Mike Nestor. He had nowhere to go after about a couple of yards, maybe three at the most. That play is, a, is available. I mean, that sort of step back throw to Nestor for about two or three yards, but you know, that, you know, they need a little more than that. Second down, about three, back to pass McGovern, looking over the middle, throwing, and it is caught, Ooh. and then dropped, and then fallen on by Hoffman. Did he catch it and drop it? Will they give him the reception? They will. All right, he caught it, took a stride, 
The ball came loose. He fell on it at midfield. First and 10, Salve. Shotgun formation. Slots left and right. McGovern, short drop, looking around. Now out of the pocket on the run. Throws near far side, and it is caught. And that is going to be caught by Max DeVito. They need a timeout. And Salve calls a timeout after a gain of about eight yards. Nice, that time, scramble by Tyler McGovern. Got out of that pocket, rolled out to his left, and found Max DeVito in the flat, left side. So it is a 10-7 Endicott lead with 40 seconds to go in this first half. If you want to call this a must win for Salve, I would not argue that. Uh, they really, really need this one. Uh, they, if they go 0-2 in the conference, um, that's going to be a tall, tall uh, you know, task ahead. And uh, they, they really need this one. And Endicott's darn good. And coming up next week for Salve is a bye week. And when they come back from the bye week, they have to take on the favorite to win the conference on the road, Western New England. Yeah, that, that, they're just a perennial powerhouse. All right, they're going to try to get this ball farther down the field, maybe 15, 20 yards. At the 42 in Endicott territory. Long look from McGovern. Now he's rolling. Now he throws and it's dropped. He threw it behind Mike Nestor, who almost made the catch anyway. It would have been a first down, but it falls incomplete. It's third down. Yeah. Well, now the key is get the first down. 33.6 seconds left to go. So getting a score before halftime is not looking easy for sure. Well, if I'm Endicott defensively, I want to know where Joey Moriello is. Yep. And right now he's going to set up in the backfield along with Tyler McGovern in the shotgun formation. We've got double slots left and right. Third and two. Back to pass McGovern. Looking, throwing short, and oh. it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Danny Hoffman right at the first down yard to gain. He had Hoffman on the right and Moriello on the left. They were both wide open. 24 seconds left in the half. Will Salve go for it at the 42 of Endicott on fourth and two? I think they will, but uh, boy, they better get it because <laughs> Endicott is a much more of a big play team than Salve generally. The play is signaled in from the sidelines. They're going to go for it on fourth and two, it appears. I don't think it'll be a punt this time. McGovern from the shotgun. Hands it off to Moriello, goes wide, picks up the first down and more. 30-yard line, Moriello 20, Moriello 10, Moriello spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Salve! Oh, my goodness. What a great run by Joey Moriello, designed to go off tackle. He took it wide and just spun away from two or three potential tacklers along the far sideline to get into the end zone. His second touchdown of the game. Extra point attempt coming from Angelo DeSanto. DeVito the holder. Snap, kick, long enough, good enough. Salve, 14, Endicott 10, 18 seconds left in the half. Let's well, take a 60-second timeout right here on The ideal choice for all your dining, social... <laughs>
Now the might be Endicott after all. If that's the case, they have two timeouts left, but they only have eight seconds left in the half. Salve leads 14 to 10. First and 10. Oh. I could see Koloski throwing two passes if they were quick. Or one and then a kick. Yeah, that sounds, both of those sound possible. So Salve has bookended this first half with touchdowns. And both times it was Joey Moriello on the first drive and on the last drive of the half for Salve. And uh, Salve is playing a absolute <laughs> center field kind of a defense. They're just trying to keep everything in front of them. Four back deep, quick pass comes up close and it is caught by Shanley. Breaks one tackle, heads for the sideline, gets out of bounds. 1.8. 1.8 seconds left. Will they set it up? The ball, the gain is inside the 30 of Salve, which would be another close to 50 yard field goal attempt for Nick DiCarano. He came up short on his last one. The wind is a cross, well, now the wind is 46. blowing into his face. 46. Okay, 46 yard field goal attempt into the wind. Here's the kick. It's not quite going to be long enough. It it's is. good. It just got over the uh, crossbar and just avoided that left upright. Nick D. Carano, a 46-yard field goal to make it a one-point game. It is 14 to 13. Salve has the lead. We have reached halftime. We take a timeout right here. For Sean Napolitano and A1 Roofing, it's not just about right, roofing. A1. It's about That's why all of A1 Roofing. A1 and, and VD. A1 is a GAF Master Elite Roofer. A distinction held by less than 2% of roofing companies in the nation. And uh, we're going to have a little chat here with the gentleman, Mr. Greg Kay, the commissioner of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. Mr. Kay, nice to see you. Bob, it's a pleasure to be here with you. You are doing, what are we calling it, CCC Days? CCC Day. Um, it's a series of one-day events at each one of our nine schools where we're handing out some promotional items, trying to distribute uh, the conference's new logo. Uh, spending some time with fans um, and just really trying to spread a little bit of goodwill, answer some questions, and it's really been very well received. This is actually the third one that we've done. We'll have uh, we'll have six more to go. Now you have a little you have a little tent set up over there on the one side. Yeah, we have a we have a, a big uh, ten by ten tent set up over by the uh, the main entrance that fans can't miss when they come in and they can stop by pick up a promotional item, talk to us. We try to take some pictures for social media, um, and it's been tremendous. We've given out about 400 items today. Nice. Now, I would assume, as, as a commissioner of a conference, your concerns are a lot about um, your number of schools and your number of sports. That Absolutely. You're How is that going for you? We really are at a, a great point in the conference. Um, we, we have a couple big things that we're looking forward to. Um, next year for 2020, 2021, we're going to be adding our 10th full member, uh, Suffolk University. So that'll get us back to 10. We're currently at nine full members. So that'll be a real big addition for us. Uh, uh, tremendous school, tremendous academic fit, shares a profile very similar to a lot of our other members. Another big story that we just announced the other day is that we will be in essence adding 
women's ice hockey, which will become our 19th championship sport. Uh, the Colonial Hockey Conference is essentially going to be rebranded as CCC Women's Ice Hockey. Um, that conference, which Salve has been a part of, uh, along with three other CCC schools, uh, has been in existence since 2015. And due to some membership issues within that conference, uh, a couple of New York schools whose multi-sport conference is also adding women's ice hockey, that league was left with strictly CCC members. So really the time was right. Uh, what really helped us is that that league, while it is going to be down to just the, uh, the four CCC schools plus Becker College, um, that league has two years to get back up to seven. Mm -hmm. The addition of Suffolk and then also Western New England, which is a core CCC member, they'll be adding the sport next year as well which will get it back to seven. So it'll be all CCC schools, plus Becker, who will be on board with us as an associate member, as they are on the men's side, and also in football. Uh, so that'll be something we're really looking forward to, is, is um, having the women skate under the CCC uh, umbrella. Okay, well, as a member of the media, I'd like to thank you for your conference name, because I can spell CCC very easily. Absolutely. So I, I appreciate it. <laughs> now, as the commissioner, yep. um, one thing you want to do is get more exposure for this mm -hmm. conference, more recognition. Um, are you satisfied with where you're at? Are you bound and determined to make it even more so? There's always more that you can do. I, I think the biggest change um, over the last couple of years, primarily the last few years, has been the advent of a lot of digital networks that the individual schools are putting together. So in essence, you don't necessarily have to rely on outside entities to broadcast your games and whatnot. It's o events are always available, uh, just like this one today over the website uh, that Salve uh, puts together. So we are currently exploring the feasibility of doing a CCC digital network uh, where you would be able to go to one place and access all of the various feeds. It's, it's a little tricky because each of our schools uses different vendors, different services, but that's something that we're working on that we really hope to unveil. Social media has just been incredible. Uh, the amount of exposure that we get, the amount of interaction that we get when we do something like CCC Day or during our championship season when we get out uh, and try to uh, put some photos out there and, and some brief videos, it's really amazing. So those are things that 10, 15, 20 years ago, you never could have imagined that it would be at that same level. So that's really been a big focus for us is getting the conference name and the conference brand out via social media. Uh, our schools, all of the sports information departments are outstanding in what they do. And when we bring them all together, uh, the, the actual total result is, is greater than the sum of the parts. So we're fortunate that we have good people at all of our schools. Well, we're happy to have you here this afternoon, Mr. K. And hopefully you'll uh, continue to do what I know is already a hard job, but a great job. Bob, thank you so much. Appreciate all you do for Salve and also for the CCC. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Greg K., the commissioner of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. We're going to take a timeout, come back with more at halftime. Salve 14, Endicott 13 on WADK and WADK.com. One of Newport's best dining options right okay, along Midtown, the Okay, Midtown, Newport Insurance, and, on and Salve. Okay, Newport Midtown, dining. Newport Insurance, Midtown Salve. Serves daily from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, Midtown offers a fantastic array of dinner entrees from 4 oh, until yeah. 9 30. Yeah, Friday oh, and Saturday the night. They upgraded the field. Uh, and be sure to check out the Sunday brunch from 11 to 3. Hit Town Oyster Bar, 345 Thames. Phone 619-4100 or visit MidtownOyster.com. Of course. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you actually Manual know labor. <laughs> isn't one of the biggest expenses you have. Good luck with all have. that. Whether Thanks. for personal Thanks. or business Thanks. protection, purchasing insurance can be a confusing and expensive proposition. The experienced staff at Newport Insurance will search the insurance marketplace for you and provide the best options available for your business or personal needs. Give them a call, stop by their office on East Main Road in Middletown, or visit their website. Newport Insurance would welcome the opportunity to work with you. 
As a community-based business, Newport Insurance has been and will be very supportive of youth programs and sports on Aquidneck Island. As part of that support, they are very proud to be a sponsor of local high school and Salve Regina sporting events on WADK, a a broadcast tradition for more than 45 years. Newport Insurance wishes the best of luck to all our local teams this season. His kids are going through right now. He's got twins going through their website at Uh newportinsuranceagency.com. Basketball. I forgot what they do in the fall. A new weekly video feature from Salve Regina Athletics titled and his daughter and is Miss Rhode Island. Will hit the internet and is up for Miss America. Wow. Very soon. Salve Regina University Athletic girl Facebook named Molly. <laughs> Subscribe to the Seahawks YouTube channel to follow each weekly episode, which offers glimpses of the teams during competition, practices, scrimmages, team meetings, and...
54 and 41 yards. Ryan Lawton caught five passes for 103 yards. Danny Hoffman caught 10 passes for 94 yards. Joey Moriello last year was held to 50 yards on 20 carries. He's already got 100 today. Angelo DeSanto kicked four field goals, 25, 37, 35, and 19. Joe Koloski last year, 26 of 43, 357 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Allen Gibson took a kickoff and returned it 94 yards for a touchdown. The time of possession in the game last year, Salve Regina, 40 minutes. Oof. 20 for Endicott, 47-34. Today, we're at halftime, it's 14 to 13. You can draw whatever conclusions from that that you want, but that was last year, this was this year, and I can't wait for the second half to Ooh, start. It has been a good one so far. All right, we take a timeout. We come back and get very close to that second half kickoff. Stay tuned for more Salve Regina football after this time. comprehensive framework that offers direction We have uh, Brian Lynch, who's the public address announcer. Uh, Brian, probably more famous for being the father of John Lynch. Uh, we have uh, Derek Sarfodarko. Spiffy is taking care of the game's music ah. this afternoon. And up here, helping uh, work the game on the stream, we've got uh, Andy Bender on the stream. She's the producer and an incredible producer with an interesting green hooded sweatshirt on there. I'm not, not sure I like that one. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, Victoria Schwindemann, how about that? Uh, she's uh, the camera operator and has caught every single play, hasn't missed a beat. And then we've got uh, Lauren Alholm on the stats and hanging around pretending like he's working is Ed Habershaw, the uh, sports information director and associate. Uh, athletic director. I just gave your son a big a big clue. I just mentioned your son on the radio. Is that okay? I mentioned your son on the radio. Is that all right? I, I, I didn't talk about you. <laughs> Little Brian Lynch coverage right there. Mr. Ascoli, what, what's going to happen in the second half? I, you, uh, well, I'll tell you. 14-13 <laughs> is what we had in the first half. It was, it's been that tense and that tight. Uh, they've each had a lead. Salve has had the lead for most of the half, but uh, when, like I said, with a one-point lead, this has really turned itself into a 30-minute game because whoever wins the second half is probably going to win the whole shooting match. So yeah, probably, here we go. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Well, Salve gets the opening possession of the second half. I'm sure if you're a Salve fan, you are really hoping they just march right down the field to 
capture the momentum that they kind of lost a little at the end of the first half. Well, again, it was uh, they got that touchdown at the end of the first half with like you know 16 seconds or whatever it was to go. And then they did a little short kickoff to the 40, and on the before they ran a play or on the very first play, it was a 15-yard uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Salve, and that just killed them. Yeah, little hands to the face didn't help at all. All right, well, it will be the Endicott kickoff that we're going to watch right now. Salve will be working from our right to left yep. Yep. as they get ready for the opening kick. <laughs> and doing the honors there is uh, Nick DiCarano, who's kicked that uh, couple of field goals here. Well, one. No, two. Two. All right, here's the approach. Here's the kick. High end over end kick on the far side. And it will bounce. Uh -oh. It's on the ground. And Salve's going to have to fall on it. Confusion as to who was going to receive it. Yeah. Justin Gentorno finally was able to fall on it just over the 10 yard line. Boy, I'll tell you, it should have been the up guy who, uh, who made it, but he kind of ran forward to go block. And uh, they just w weren't ready. And it hit the ground and st just stood there. And uh, but, you know, by the time he jumped on it, they were at the 13 yard line. And if they're going to have any momentum, they're going to have to start it deep in their own territory. All right, Tyler McGovern brings out that offensive squad of his with Captain Mike Saunders at center, Kyle Wisniewski, Stephen Dewey at the guards, Pete Noonan and Elian Telford at the tackles. Snap, McGovern throws far side, oh. batted away by Simone. And if he'd had one more half step, he would have picked it off for a pick six. Mike Nestor, the intended receiver. And that little pass to Mike Nestor on the right flat is something that uh, McGovern has been going to constantly. And uh, that time they jumped the route and almost picked it off. And Tyler doesn't really look to see if Nestor's open. He just drops back and throws it yeah, almost. And he kind of lobs it a little bit. All right, slots left and right, second down 10. On um, Moriello trying to go off tackle on the right side. Oh my goodness. Breaks some tackles again <laughs> and gets out to about the 19 yard line. It looks like he's not going to get anywhere past the 15. And all of a sudden, he's four yards farther upfield. He got six yards on that carry. Five of them were pretty much all him. It sets up, though, a third down and four on the opening drive of the second half for Salve. Again, the slots are left and right in this spread formation. Moriello goes in motion to the right. McGovern is going to be rushed. He's in the pocket. He's in trouble. He's sacked for the first time. And Sam Opont is the man who wraps him up. Once Tyler got pushed out of his original pocket, he started to panic a little, and he went down at the 17-yard line. Yeah, a sack and a loss of two, and uh, that is not what Salve was looking for. So back for the Gulls goes uh, the always dangerous Anthony Bracamonte. He's nearly to midfield too, so he's not expecting this kick to go much farther. There is no wind at the moment. And here is the punt. And DeSanto is going to get it over the head of Bracamonte, who's going to have to let it roll now. And Salve will down it at the 45. It was almost touched by a member of the Gulls, but he managed to get away in time. So a pretty good punt that time from Angelo DeSanto, not Anthony, Angelo DeSanto. First and 10 for the Endicott Gulls in the all white road uniforms going left to right in this third quarter. Salve leading 14-13. The ball is at the 45 of Endicott. And the always dangerous Joe Koloski, senior captain quarterback and that arm of his goes back to work. And in motion to the right is Bracamonte. And the handoff's in the backfield to John Kenny, who gets away from the initial tackle and runs past another defender, stays on his feet. Nice job by John Kenny to not go down that's, when he was almost tackled in the backfield. That should have been a three-yard loss, and it ended up being a big gain. Oh, not as big as I thought, though. Picked up about six. Several missed tackles that time for Salve. Second and four. Well, these opening minutes have not gone Salve's way. Snap, handoff, Kenny again, picks up a block on that right side, gets close to a first down. They mark his forward progress just a little bit shy of that first down. And the ball is placed just outside the Salve 45. Third down, half a yard. No huddle, spread formation, shotgun formation. Kalaski, snap, wants to pass. 
throw is in the flat. Bracamonte, first down, pushed out of bounds in front of the Salve bench around the 37-yard line of Salve. First and 10. Well, picked up nine yards on a fourth and inches. So, uh, yeah, actually eight yards to the 38-yard line. Drive here for the Gulls, trying to take the lead. This is Kenny running right side. Not much of a hole. He just puts his head down and dives forward for about three yards to the 35-yard line as Matt Messner is in there early to help make the stop along with Suki Singh. Second down and seven for the Gulls. Right to left they go. Salve shows a four-man front. Play fake. Pass over on the wide open on the wing. Caught there by Shanley. Shanley's down to about the 12-yard line. Tackle made out there in the secondary by Matt Sylvia, who's finally in the game after having to sit uh, for the first half. But I don't think that was the intentional or the first intended receiver, but Riley Shanley was wide open. Another pass to Shanley. No, it's McManaway. Touchdown. Shea McManaway just over the goal line in the left corner. Out jumps the defender, John Good. And quickly the Gulls march downfield and take the lead. So the uh, job of Shea McManaway is to simply be taller than the defender and make some catches. Extra point attempt now by DiCarano. Awaiting the snap. And it's down. And it's up. And it's good. So early second half. And the Gulls strike and take a 20 to 14 lead over Salve. A 30 second timeout right here. Newport Propane and the Sherman family have been. Taken charge. Right, this was a terrible start to the second half for Salve. Uh, that, that drive was just too darn easy, and there was something about the end of it that got Kevin Gilmartin furious. He's been yelling at the official for like two or three minutes. All right, let's see what happens on this kickoff. The Gulls, DiCarano, sends a high end-over-end -end kick. Coming down toward Justin Gentono at the 12. Heads for the right side, finds a block, gets two people to beat, but caught from behind and brought down, and that is not, not Gentono, it's Tyle Laughlin. I think he made a fumble the ball. In a, no. Yeah, you're right, it was Gentono, the ball came loose, and Tyle Laughlin saved the possession. Penalty flag thrown after the play was blown dead. Well, I think what happened was uh, that wasn't a fumble, it was uh, blown dead a little uh, behind there, and I guess maybe something happened after the whistle. I'm not sure. The uh, referee, Mr. McDonald, is miked. Okay, and again, Kevin Gilmartin is pleading his case. A face mask penalty against Endicott. The ball is resting at the 43-yard line. And now coming over to talk to Kevin Gilmartin is Craig McDonald, the referee. Yeah, he's been going at the lineman now since the last play of Endicott. He, there was something he did not like. Oh, Kevin is just hot. And Mr. McDonald is being emphatic in his conversation with Kevin. Standing right there is the linesman. And the linesman is the guy who Kevin is angry at. And uh, I think what's happening is the referee is waiting for the rest of his crew. That's the line judge, actually, Robert Malone. Pat Rahilly is the head linesman. Frank Eula is the umpire. John Cameron, the side judge. Dennis Reed, the field judge. Up here running the clock, Patrick Costello. Playcock, John Trushita. Salve ball in Endicott territory at the 43. Uh -oh. And McGovern's caught in the backfield and hauled down. 
He never had a chance to do anything. He was attacked by Grayson Maddox, the defensive end, the senior captain out of Park City, Utah. And I'll tell you, right now, Salve is reeling. It is now the ball back on the 48 of Endicott. That was a loss of almost six yards. Second down for Salve, now trailing 20 to 14. Early second half. Trips to the left, snap to McGovern. Looks over the middle, throws wide open, and falling down is Mike Nestor at the 40-yard line. No, I'm sorry, that's not Matt. That is number 82, Ryan Lawton, who makes the reception. It's at the 40. It's going to set up a third down and about eight. Jake Kelleher is late into the offensive set. A little confusion here. Moriello comes off the field. Play being signaled in from the sideline. 13 seconds on the shot clock. At the 40 of Endicott, Salve third and eight. Trips to the right, Kelleher in motion to the right. Back to pass McGovern, pushed out of the pocket, gets away from the pressure, looking for some help, and is gonna keep it. Now throw down field and caught by Mike Nestor, shy of the first down. Wow. That was, a, <laughs> we called uh, Tyler earlier, not too mobile. That time, he was very mobile. But that time, they're going to give him a first down. Wow. Really? Yeah. They're moving chains here. And somebody from Salve is down on the ground. Raising, Nestor, I think. I think Mike's it's Nestor. It I is. think so, yeah. <clears throat> He's got something jammed. So they needed to get to the 38-yard line, and they certainly did that. They were somewhere around the 33. But the scrambling of McGovern made that all happen. He was nearly sacked by one defender. He wiggled away from that. He started scrambling to his right, almost got tackled there. And then at the last second, saw Mike Nestor, pointed at him and got it to him just in time to grab the first down. And uh, the way it's looking right now, he could be losing his best, his favorite receiver, um, at least temporarily. He's got seven catches on the day. All right, this may take a few minutes here before they let Mike get up. He's lying on his back. And he was in some discomfort for sure. He is getting to a seated position and now up. Oh, it's a, it's a left side lower leg. It's either an ankle or a knee. And so we don't have Brendan Noons and now we're not gonna have Mike Nestor. No, nah, I don't think you're gonna see Mike today. So we'll see Max DeVito come in well, to take Nestor's spot. It's the old next man up uh, routine because they're going to need some help because they're now trailing 20 to 14. They're at the 32 of Endicott. Right to left they go in this half. And it's trips to the left. Moriello setback in the shotgun. McGovern to Moriello. Finds a little seam up the middle. Jukes his way forward for about seven or eight yards to the 25-yard line. Tyler Mor uh, Tyler Moriello. Joey Moriello, who gained 100 yards in the first half with another one of those typical Moriello runs. It'll be second down and four. Double wides, left and right. Line of scrimmage, 26. McGovern back to pass. Throws, short, caught. This is going to be Moriello. Joey gets down to close to the 15-yard line. Coming out of that backfield and going across the field right to left. First down, Salve. Another Salve first down inside or at the 16 yard line of Endicott. 2014 Endicott, third quarter action. Trips to the right, McGovern looking, throwing left and it's caught on the slant. I think that's Nestor who was pushed way out of bounds. Nope, it's not Nestor. Can't be Nestor. Might be Max DeVito. How about Joey Moriello? I'll just keep throwing names out until we get it right. That was Joey again. Almost the same play as the play before. The so gain is to the nine yard line. Second out and three. Endicott shows a four man front and a pretty good sized one at that. Moriello in the backfield. McGovern takes the snap, gives it to Joey. Looking for a seam, can't find one. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Blocking his way. Big number 99, Tom LaRusso. This is a huge play coming up. How many times have we said that, huh? Yeah. 
Been picked, a lot of those. Picked up a yard. It's going to be third down and about two. Danny Hoffman comes out. Robert Gomes is coming into the backfield. And I don't see Moriello. So Gomes is the back on third down and two. Inside the nine of Endicott. And it will be Robert Gomes, who's no met chance. right away by Sam Opont. No blocking on the big junior, 270-pounder from Bridgeport, stuffing Robert Gomes. And he lost a yard or two back to about the 10-yard line. They're going to have to set up for a field goal. So Angelo DeSanto will get a chance to narrow the gap if indeed he is going to kick this field goal from 27 yards out. Line of scrimmage or the ball goes down on the 17. Actually, a little bit of wind is kicked up into the face of Angelo. His kick is long enough, and it is good enough. Angelo DeSanto for the 27-yard field goal with 6.54 to go in the third quarter. It's Endicott 20, Salve 17. We'll be right back. Clements Marketplace, family-owned and operated. Sal, they get some points on the board in the second and the third quarter, but they have to settle for a field goal. Endicott came up with a touchdown. 20-17 is the score. DeSanto with the kickoff. Line drive kind of kick, pretty deep. Bracamonte at the seven, looking for some running room. Comes up the middle this time, and it's going to be slowed down and brought down at the 30-yard line. Well, for Salve, that was an eight-play, 47-yard drive that ended up stalling at about the 10-yard line. So Angelo DeSanto came in, kicked a 27-yard field goal, getting Salve three points and pulling them to within 20-17 to 17 with six and a half minutes left to go in the third. All right, for the Seahawks, that front line working hard. Nick Pellucci and Jack Gulfy in the middle of it. Suki Singh and Brandon Kaplan on the outside of it. Linebackers, Drew Balistrieri, Matt Messner, and Carlos Rivera, or Zach Katerius. Okay, just the tempo alone by Endicott is just phenomenal. At their own 30, first and 10 for the Gulls, leading 20 to 17. And a long delay here for a moment. Are they trying to fix the clock? Uh, yes. I think they want it to be 6.54 or something like that? Well, they've got it to 6.50. Okay, they're going to settle for that. All right. And Joe Koloski, who's a senior and a captain, goes back to work. Good-sized quarterback, 6'2", two, two and a quarter. Yeah, he's a big he's a big kid. John Kenny alongside of him. And back to pass Koloski, looking to his right, and the throw is a little low. Intended over there for McManaway again. Well, with the ball on the right hash mark, he threw way over to the left side. I think the th thing was just too darn long. It's hard to complete when you're going across the field like that. Charlie Connell was the man on the coverage of McManaway, who had got the best of Justin Jantorno in the first half. Second down and 10. Well, Salve <coughs> kind of needs a stop here. And it got at their 30. Right now, not much of a breeze. In motion, Zach Denyck. Handoff, goes off tackle. And there is Matt Mester right there to stop the runner cold. Great, solid hit on Anthony Whiteley by Matt Messner, the leading tackler on this team, the junior from Midland, New Jersey. Well, he, well, they gave him four yards on that play, but... Uh, what? I know, it didn't look like it, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> Third down and six, ball at the 34. Likely to go to the air with the trips to the left side of this formation. Snap. Koloski back to pass, being rushed by Zagarius. Sack again! Zach Katarius with his third sack of the game. Boy, I tell you, what a game for him. Back to the 21-yard line, a loss of 13 yards. 
Sophomore out of Sandwich, Mass. 5'11", 210, Zach Katerius. Oof. Fourth that down and long and on to punt is Neil Perry. They hadn't been getting to him until then. They got him early and now they're gonna get the ball back. Probably a pretty good field position, although this kid can punt. Justin Jantorno is the single deep back inside his 45 yard line. There's the snap, here's the kick, it's high, and Jantorno is gonna let it go. Don't touch it, sir. <laughs> and it'll be downed at the 33 yard line by Endicott, and it's Andrew Hancock. So Salve gets it back. Flag dropped back where the snap was made and the punt occurred. Hmm. I didn't see any roughing of a kicker or anything. I didn't either. Huh. Just because I didn't see it. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. And it's a first down. Oh, man. That is dreadful for Salve. I saw somebody get pretty deep and jump up and put his hand up, but I didn't see what happened after that. He might have just landed on the punter. Oh. So to the 36-yard line they go. Well, let's see if Salve can do something about stalling this one. Otherwise, a big break right here for Endicott. We, let's hope we don't remember that one. Double winds left and right. Kenny's the setback alongside the shotgun quarterback, Kalaski with his long snap count. Gets the snap. Two-step drop, looking, still oh, looking. Oh, there Throws it is. One, a holding penalty, we've called it a pass, caught by Anthony Bracamonte, stopped by John Good. But way back upfield, where the pass was made, there's a holding call against Endicott. And if it's a spot foul, it was in the well in the backfield. Inside the 30-yard line is where the flag is dropped. So they're gonna go from the 36 yard line back to the, well it's not a, probably be the 21. No, it's the 26, 26? so it's, it's not from the spot, it's from the line of scrimmage. So first and 20. All right, out wide to the left side, Justin McEwen in motion to the left is Bracamonte. Kalaski with the snap. Being it, rushed by Messner, gets it off anyway to Kenny. Kenny being chased, can't, is now being brought down over on the far sideline, and that's by Drew Balistrieri. That Messner also got to him for a big loss, but Kenny got away for what turns out to be. About a two-yard gain, maybe? A short one for sure. Yeah, just two. They mark it at the 28-yard line, second down and long. Endicott with the ball and the lead with four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Again with the double wides left and right. Koloski looks to pass, looking over the middle. Finally gets it Taylor Bracamonte. Bracamonte makes some nice moves and is finally pushed out of bounds by John Good. But uh, he had the defenders guessing which way he was going there for a while. Little indecision on the part of Charlie Connell. Bracamonte is a shifty little runner. And when I say little, I'm talking 5'7", 160 freshman. Pick up of seven on that one. Still going to be third and 11. At their own 35-yard line, Koloski had all kinds of time that time. Yeah, they need to get to him here if they can. From the shotgun. Here they quick come. Quick drop. Slant across the middle is caught, but shy of a first down. Pass was McManaway. John Good on the stop. Shea McManaway, talented sophomore. It'll be fourth down and a little more than two for Endicott. The ball on their 44-yard line. And they will punt. They Justin Janturno deep. It's 2017 Endicott getting late in the third quarter. Big Commonwealth Coast Conference battle here. Perry awaits the snap. He's got it, and he'll get it away. High, but not too deep. No, quite. It'll bounce at the 30, go laterally at the 30. It'll be Salve's ball at their own 29-yard line. Nice high punt, but not overly long. Well, they got to run a few more plays. Did Endicott, and Salve has to start about four yards back from where they were, but otherwise, no harm, no foul on this one. 
Well, there was that one foul that didn't help, but it turns out they got away with it. That's what I'm saying. They didn't really lose much yardage. They lost, all they lost really was a little bit of time. 3.04 left to go in the third now. All right, it's going to be uh, Max DeVito filling in for the injured Mike Nestor, and he'll be one of the trips out wide to the right side. Tyler McGovern back to work in the shotgun. Fakes to Moriello uh -oh. and flips it out to where nobody <laughs> was. That was... Uh, that, was, that did not look good. That was in the general direction of Ryan Lawton, but his pass pattern did not take him anywhere near where Tyler threw that pass. And there was tough coverage on that one as well from Medi Squally. It comes to uh, Rochester, New York. Second down and 10 for Salve at their own 29. They go right to left. This is interesting. Five members of the Salve team are over here on the sidelines waving their arms as if that is some kind of signal hmm. behind the offensive coordinator. Play fake, pass, wide open. Ryan Lawton, 40, 45, 50, 45. Great slant pattern that time by Lawton. Finally brought down in the secondary by free safety Joe Padgett. Nicely executed by the Seahawks. And again, same thing. Five guys behind the offensive coordinator waving their arms on the sideline. I'm not sure what that's all about. Well, it worked. <laughs> Double wides. McGovern throws. And it gets right to the intended receiver. And that's Mike Nestor. Well, no kidding. Back in the ball game. Mike Nestor catches this one inside the 40-yard line. Short game. If he's going to be in the game, Tyler's going to try to find him. Just inside the 39-yard line. Second down, almost five here for Salve, putting the trips out to the right side. Moriello in the backfield, and it will be Joey with the call. Goes wider to the left, down to the 35-30. Still on his feet, 25, and nudged out of bounds somewhere around that 25-yard line. But there was a penalty on the play, and this line judge is not going to, he's not going to be invited to the uh, Salve brunch tomorrow. It's a holding call against Salve. Yeah. That will eliminate a nice run by Joey Moriello. It was a great play, by the way, by Kevin O'Brien to get him out of bounds, but as it turns out, it doesn't matter. Would have been a first down, though, and now they're going to be second down and kind of long. They placed the, the ball at the 48 of Endicott. Yep. <laughs> so it'll be second down from there. A 15-ish. Ryan Lawton sets up as a wide out on the right side in the slot. McGovern to Mariello, tries that left side again, stays on his feet and gets down to almost the 40 yard line for Sam Opont, wraps him up. This junior tackle is very active and mobile at 275 pounds. Again, I don't know quite how he does what he does. Joey Mariello came through there and there were big guys on either side of him and he just found his way through. Third down and seven, Salve at the 40 of Endicott. Again with the double slot formation on the spread. McGovern looking left, throws left, and it is in and out of the hands of Danny Hoffman, who would have had a first down had he been able to hold on to it. So it brings up fourth down for Salve. We're late in the third quarter, just over a minute to go. Salve down by three. And... This is usually where, in this part of the field, Tyler McGovern punts rather than passes. He steps back a couple of steps. Oh, oh he's offside. Oh, yeah. Endicott oh. looks like they charged into the neutral zone. A false start oh, is the indication. You, no way. So there was some movement on the front line there by Salve. Well, yikes. So we'll push it back five yards. Yeah, there's someone came across for Endicott, but apparently they were drawn off by some movement. So the ball's at the 45 of Endicott. Tyler again sets up in a shotgun formation, then takes a couple more steps back, gets the snap and gets the punt away, but this one's really short. And it's going to hit inside and take an Endicott roll. Wow. So finally stopped over there by Salve Regina's Mike Saunders. About a 12-yard punt. He has to do it quickly because he's not that far off the line of scrimmage, Tyler McGovern. So that time he couldn't get a lot of foot into it. 
As a result, Endicott's on their own 28-yard line. First and 10 and leading 20 to 17 in the final minute of the third quarter. Joe Koloski has impressed with that arm of his. He's got trips to the left side. Play fake, throw on the left is caught and a gain of about five yards coming out of this one. And that passes to Zach Denike. So again, Drew Balistrieri gets in on the stop. He's been active this afternoon. Ball is at the, almost the 34 of Endicott. Play fake. Oh, Koloski gets it away. It's caught by Denike. It'll be a first down just over the 40-yard line. It was good coverage that time by the Seahawks, but it was such a perfectly thrown pass. And good pressure on the quarterback, too. No so first and 10, no huddle. Right up to the line of scrimmage come the goals. Ty O'Loughlin is coming into the secondary. The play is a run, and that's Whiteley, and he gets a short gain. There is Balistrieri again to help on the stop. That'll end the quarter. I don't care how fast they run this playoff. So that'll end the quarter on that play. So here we go, into the fourth quarter. Endicott leads 20 to 17. They've got the ball, and we'll be back right after this. A flat roof that leaks. Shanley sets him up as a slot back on the left side. Play fake, roll out Koloski. Throws downfield and it is gonna be caught. Diving catch over there by Zach Denike, right in front of his bench in Salve territory around the 41 yard line. I beg your pardon, 42. First and 10, snap, handoff, Whiteley, right side. Little bit of an opening. Slowed down, brought down, but not before he gets about six or seven yards. Anthony Whiteley, junior out of Pittsfield, Mass. Puts him at the 36, picked up six, second and four in Salve territory. And we'll have to have a timeout called here by Salve because they had too many men on the field as that uh, Gulls lineup gets right up to the line of scrimmage for a quick snap. And Kevin Gilmartin was forced to call a timeout to avoid too many men on the field. So, early fourth quarter, the Salve defense is in the spotlight right now. They gotta come through with a way to slow down this Gulls offense. And that is not easy to do. Secondary four, the uh, Seahawks have been challenged quite a bit. Hayden Pereira, Matt Sylvia now in the game after having to sit the first half. Charlie Connell, Justin Gentuno, John Goods put in some key moments. So is Ty O'Loughlin. But right now, it's uh, Mike Sylvia is back there along with Gentorno. Ty O'Loughlin is in the secondary right now at one of the cornerback slots. All right, Endicott with the ball in Salve territory at their 36 yard line, second down and four. Trips to the left side in this formation. Golaski's gonna change the play. He's got Whiteley on his right shoulder. 
and it will be a pitch to Whiteley on the right side, goes wide, and is going to be at first down and more as he's finally nudged out of bounds. Matt Messner had him for a moment, but he slid out of Matt's tackle to get that first down. Well, picked up about almost 10 yards or maybe more. That Gulls bench on the far side is very fired up, cheering each and every play. First and 10 for the Gulls. And they'll be right around the 20. No, nope. oh my goodness. Salve comes charging in. Let's see if they were drawn offside. And it is a false start against the Gulls to slow it down just a bit. Fourth quarter, plenty of time to go, over 14 minutes. 20 to 17, Endicott. Ball now comes back to the 33-yard line, first and 15. Trips formation to the left. The throw goes wide downfield, and there was contact down there where Ty O'Loughlin was covering Justin McEwen, and apparently he got a little bit too much uh, hands on him, and it will be a pass interference call that will go against Salve Regina. Waiting for the official indication now. Holding, defensive holding on uh, Ty O'Loughlin. Now is that a first? Uh, it's usually it? an automatic first right, down. But is it a five or a 15? In college, I think it's five like the pros. They bring the ball back to the original line of scrimmage through with 33 and they'll mark off more than five. 10. Put it down at the 23 yard line and it is automatic first. Oh, first down. Yep. First down. The goals on the march trying to add to their 20 to 17 lead from the 28 yard line looking to pass again toward the end zone and this time overthrown intended down there for looks like Zach tonight again. Joe Koloski trying to lay it in the corner of the end zone right side just a little bit too far for Zach tonight pretty good coverage and salve has been doing this on, the, on a lot of passes where the coverage is tight but the defender never looks back so they don't know where the ball is so that time the, the coverage was good and the pass was just too long second out and ten for Endicott Salve here would like to hold him to nothing more than a field goal if yeah. that right all right, double slots, left and right. And it will be a handoff, off tackle. And this is going to be Whiteley driving inside the 20-yard line. Nice piece of uh, yardage right there, following blocking on the left side, which is five, led by Isaiah Gibbs and Andrew Padino. Well, it's now third down and five. They're in field goal range, but boy, does Salve need this play. Crowd trying to help out here for the Salve defense at the 18 yard line of Salve. Shotgun as usual. Slots left and right, okay. movement in the front line. Salve looks like they got drawn again and it is a false start on the left side of that offensive line for the Gulls. Again, very smart play. When you see the movement, you cut across and make contact and force the officials to call it. And that's what Suki Singh did. Young man, a senior from Arlington, Suki Singh. All right, so now we're at third and 10. And if, if Salve ever needed a play in this season, this is it. Ball back on the 23. Velasquez sets up the spread formation with trips to the right side. McManaway split to the left. Back to pass Kolaski. Looking left toward McManaway, and it is going to be caught, or did it bounce? I thought it skipped. No, it's caught, and it is McManaway. Covered over there by Justin Gentorno. This time McManaway went down and came back for the intentional short thrown pass that was very effectively accomplished, and a first down. Hand off. Whiteley trying to break free. Gets inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line before he's wrapped up by Suki. It'll be second down and goal at the seven yard line. They were just inside the 10 when that play, that possession started. 
They set up and it looks like a wildcat position. McEwen is going to take the, no, it's not McEwen. It's a throw and a pass. Again, loose. Kid, did he make the catch? Yes, I don't see the yes. indication. I don't see the indication. Now they say it is a touchdown. Who caught it? I don't know. Eight threw it. That's Dylan Bonfilio, the backup quarterback. But I couldn't tell who, I couldn't tell who caught it. I know who threw it, but I don't know who caught it. 22? Somebody we don't. That's Whiteley, the halfback. Okay. Penalty flag before the extra point try. And let's see who's the guilty party here. Little uh, delay in the action. We don't know who caught that pass. We're hearing 22 up here, but not sure. And let's see who's guilty of what here. Is this against Salve? Looks like it might go against them. They go from the three half the distance to the one and a half. Let's see if they want to stick with the extra point kick or will they go for two? So illegal substitution. Penalty is declined. They'll stay with the ball at the three. And it will be an extra point attempt here for Di Carano. Now the whistles are blowing again. Let's see if the goals are going to change their mind. Apparently not. Oh, they just uh, hadn't moved the football back to the three since the penalty was declined. All right. So right now it's 26 to 17. Extra point attempt is in the air and is good. The Gulls have the 10 point advantage, 27 to 17. 12, 21 remaining. We'll take a timeout right here. One of Newport's best dining options right along the waterfront. In the fourth quarter, Endicott's got a lead of 10 points now. 27-17. Salve's got some work to do. Salve waiting for the reception. They'll be working offensively from our left to right. Justin Giantorno in the middle of the deep set here for Salve. The kickoff is a high end over end kick that's going to sail out of bounds. So if Salve wants... They can have it upfield or force a re-kick. Me, I'd like the 35. And it looks like Salve will go that route and get to work. Again, that front line for the Seahawks working hard and outweighed quite a bit. But uh, Mike Saunders, senior captain in the middle at center. Stephen Dewey, Kyle Wisniewski at the guards. Dewey from Plymouth, Mass. Kyle's from Harwich, Mass. Pete Noonan is the uh, tackle on the left side. Junior from Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Elian Telford, a sophomore from Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Seeing a lot of time on the right side. And it will be at the 35. First and 10, Salve. In the shotgun, Tyler McGovern. Back to pass. He's got time. Throws over the middle. It's up there and picked off in midfield. And making the interception is Joe Padgett. And a costly turnover there for Salve Regina. That one was floating up in the air, well downfield, but Joe Padgett easily picked it off. And on a return right in front of the Salve bench, sets up Endicott at the Salve 43-yard line. Well, that might be the play that just, you know, really, really puts this game in Endicott's favor. If Salve can't come back, it could be that play that was the absolute final turning point. And we'll see how much Endicott keeps throwing the ball. Oh, I don't think they're going to stop. 
They've got slots left and right at the 43. It'll be John Kenny with the ball going right up the middle, following the blocks for about three yards, and then push back. John Kenny on the carry. Brought down by Sukusin. Down the bottom of that pile, throwing blocks a lot this afternoon as Isaiah Gibbs, a 285-pound, six-foot-three senior and a captain. Two-yard pickup. Yep. Second down and eight. Riley Shanley and Justin McEwen wide to the right side in this set. McManaway split to the left, and it will be Kenny again. Finds a little bit of a hole, gets tripped, and falls forward. To set up a third down situation here. Well, they're probably trying to use clock, but 10 points is not insurmountable, so I expect him to go back to the air probably now. Nick Pellucci got a, tripped up a bit down to the 30 almost 37 yard line third down better part of four right here in salve territory for endicott after the turnover on the interception trips to the right mcmanaway to the left back to pass koloski flips it out over here to kenny kenny turns the corner stays on his feet dives to the 30 yard line that would be enough for a first down kenny rolling out of the backfield to the left gets down inside the 32 First down, Endicott. Slot formation right. Kenny gets the handoff. Goes right up the middle again. Two or three yards at most. And down the bottom of the pile to make the stop is Suki Singh, who's had a busy afternoon. Well, they just decided that they're going to try to run some clock right now. More than 10 minutes to go in the game. Salve down by 10. Second down, six. At about the 27 of Salve. Kenny again, tries the right side, doesn't have anything. And there is Matt Messner, no, Drew Balistrieri to get there first to wrap him up and bring him down for a loss. Drew has been very effective from his linebacking position. He's a captain as well out of Linfield, Mass. The loss is back to the 28 yard line. Well, they're gonna have to stop one of these. Third down, about six. All right now it's Riley Shanley and McManaway split out to the left side. Double wides to the right as well. Kenny in the backfield. Shotgun, play fake, throw over the middle. Caught down around the 21 yard line by McManaway. And that's gonna be, uh, Should be good it. enough. Yep, yep, good enough for the first down. Quick short passes, getting it done. First and 10 at the 21 of Salve. Trips go to the right side in this set. Kalaski looking to throw right side. It is complete to Bracamonte. Bracamonte trying to get some blocks, can't get enough. Good job over there on the far side by Salve Regina's Charlie Connell to bring that play to an end. Charlie out of Oradell, New Jersey in the uh, safety position. Forward progress of a couple of yards down inside the 20th and 19. Kenny stays in the backfield. Trips go over to the left side, and it will be Kenny again looking for blocking on the right side. Stuffed and pushed back. Once again, Drew Balistrieri right there to make another tackle. Gain about another yard or two to the 17. I don't know why Endicott would be in a hurry to keep running the quick plays without the huddles. That's true. I'd slow it down a little bit more from that angle. I know. They're under but eight and a half minutes to go now. But this is what they do. Yep. And they do it very well. They sure do. This, they've looked very good today. Spread formation with the double wides left and right. Snap back to Koloski. Throwing on the right side. It is caught by John Kenny out of the backfield. Nudged out of play. But right near that first down marker at about the 11-yard line. And another first down for the Gulls. They're using these very quick slant patterns, often with the backs, either slanting left or right, five yards, six yards downfield, angling off toward the sideline. Snap, handoff, Kenny up the middle. A yard or two at most as he is wrapped up again. And this time brought down by uh, Salve Regina's. He actually lost a yard, didn't he? Did he lose that? Well, 56 on the tackle. Now we'll call it no game. And let's find the right team here, Bob. That's Alex Pitzer. 
who made the stop. At the 11, and it will be Kenny going wide and Kenny getting wrapped up. And there he is again, Zach Katerius. What an afternoon for this sophomore. Loss of about five yards on the play. It's gonna be third down and 15. They can get a first down at the one. They are at the 16 yard line. Looking to the sideline for the play. Kenny stays in the backfield. But they have made so many clutch third down plays this afternoon. I'm telling you, I'm impressed with Endicott today. Trips on the left side. The man in the middle of the trips is the tall guy, Riley Shanley. And it will be Kenny running right up the middle and found room. He drove down to about the six. Got 10 yards or so. Yep. But it's not enough for a first down. He had to get to about the one. So they're going to probably set up for three more. Ball is at the six. Fourth down. And here, here comes come. the kicking team. They've got a 10-point lead. So no matter what, it stays a two-possession game. But it now it becomes a two-touchdown game if he hits it. Nick DiCarano is out for another field goal attempt. About 23 yards or so. Putting it down on the 13, making it 23. And the kick is on the way. It's definitely long enough, and it's definitely good enough. So add three more for Endicott. They are now up 30 to 17 over Salve Regina. Another 30 second timeout right here. This is Jim Gray, president of the BDO. assumptions that I shouldn't make. Ty O'Loughlin was in the middle to pull that one in. Is Jack McGuire heading, heading to the huddle? Maybe not. Well, if we did see Jack McGuire, no, we would see No, no, it's Tyler. Number nine. I saw Tyler, I mean, um, Jack jogging in that direction, but uh, he was just jogging in that direction, apparently. Okay. <laughs> 31-yard line. 31-yard line. First and 10, Salve. Left to right they go, down by 30 to 17 and a penalty flag Salvi's going to get charged with a delay of game wow well nothing's going right in this entire second half for Salve. took a little too long to talk about what was coming up in the first play so now it's five yards deeper at the 26 first and 15 and they'll stick with the same play Jake Kelleher is a wide out on the right side the backup quarterback Short pass to Jake up the middle, deflected, lost, incomplete. Lucky it wasn't picked off. Well, Jake was set up, cut right across the middle, barely five yards, and it went out of his hands and nearly into the hands of Endicott. Yeah, this has just been a nightmarish second half for Salve. Second they, down, 15. They led 14-13 at halftime, and now they're down 30-17. to Mike Nestor now goes in and splits wide to the right side. Ryan Lawton is wide on the left. Snap, McGovern looks, throws, caught. Nestor, 35, wrapped up and slowed down and pushed out of bounds by Endicott's Tim Russell. Short passes, decent gain. 
but we're running out of time. Pickup of about 13 yards that's going to be third and two at their own 39-yard line. Moriello in the backfield, trips to the left. Joey with a handoff, puts his head down, dives forward, but he's not going anywhere. He is piled on by the Gulls. Endicott comes out holding the football, but the play was blown dead. And once again, big Sam Opont is in the midst of the tackling for Endicott. So it's a fourth down and two for Salve at their own 39-yard line. Less than five minutes to go in the game. Salve about ready to go to 0-2 in the conference in conference play. And this is a place they're not used to being. All right, slot formation left side. Pitch wide to the right side. Moriello has the first down oh. and more. 50-yard line, 40-yard line. Tor Joey Moriello pushed out of bounds inside the 25. That was a fourth down play, by the way. Fourth and two, simply designed to go outside the right tackle. And Joey got there in a hurry and couldn't quite outrun the defense. But a big gain, and it's first and 10 salve just inside the 25 of Endicott. Now they get a move. And it will be a handoff to Gomes. Gomes looking for some room, can't find much on the right side. And he'll be stopped for a short gain, leading the charge that time. It was in there number 38 for Endicott, and that would be Alan Gibson. Yeah, these little, uh, they, they, they don't have time for you know, these sort of fullback dive kind of plays. They got to get downfield. Short breather from Moriello. No, it's still Gomes. Here's a pass on the far near sideline, way overthrown, intended out wide for Salve Regina and uh, Joe Hyland, the big tight end. Well, it's going to be third and 10, maybe nine. Line of scrimmage is the 23 in Endicott territory. Clock says 350 remaining in the game. Are they going to have to call a timeout? No? No? Well, a late substitution as Highland comes back in. He was going to go out. Plenty of time on the play clock. So they go double wides, left and right. Gomes still in the backfield. McGovern to pass. Throws on the sideline. Not even looking for it is Ryan Lawton. So it goes incomplete and well, sets up fourth down. Fourth and ten, and they gotta they gotta do it now, or it isn't gonna get done. All right, let's see what Salve comes up with on fourth down and about nine from the 23 of Endicott. The second time they've gone for it on fourth down in this drive. Last time they got 37 yard run. Snap to McGovern. Rushed out of the pocket. He's got running on if he wants it. He takes off to the 20. He's going to dive inside the first down marker and keep the drive alive. That's big. That is big. He needed to get to the 14. He got down all to the 11. There was a ton of daylight over there on the left side, and the not-so-mobile Tyler McGovern comes through with a big-time scramble and a first down. Make it the 12. Tyler back in the shotgun. Again, the double wise left and right, looks to the left, throws complete to Danny Hoffman, who didn't get out of bounds, decided to get an extra yard, and they kept the clock running. And I can't do that. Russell on the stop. Salve gets to the eight yard line. Only four yards on that pickup. If that, it's like a second and seven here. And the snap. McGovern to Moriello, right up the middle. Joey Moriello driving, diving, touchdown again. Jeez. The unstoppable Joey Moriello, right up the middle. Hit once, hit twice, doesn't matter. He's in the end zone. Third touchdown of the day for Joey Moriello. He's got 21 carries, 167 yards. Now the extra point attempt here for Angelo DeSanto, but only 2.47 left in the game. Snap, kick, it's up. Needed that and one. And it's good. So now it boils down to, can Salve convert on an onside kick? Because they need another touchdown. 
with 2.47 remaining. Well, certainly nothing, nothing boring about this one <laughs> as they just keep coming back and forth. And now Salve is within six, 2.47 to play. They only have one timeout remaining, so they have to get the onside kick or else Endicott is gonna run this clock out. Joey Moriello, eight yards a carry, 21 carries, 167 yards, three touchdowns. Don't forget, last year against Endicott, as a freshman, he had 20 carries, 50 yards. 30 to 24, Endicott. Angelo DeSanto will set up the kick. Boy, I'll tell you, that, that interception uh, home at, but right around midfield that led to that final uh, touchdown for, um, uh, for Endicott. Boy, that just hurts so much. Well, nobody expecting a kick to go very far. No, they don't even have anybody. 10 of the 11 are, are very close. They don't even have anybody inside the 25. So let's see what Angelo can do. Here comes an attempt for onside. No, it isn't. It's a pooch kick coming downfield. Bracamonte is going to take it and fall down at the 19 right away. Interesting decision for Salve trying the pooch kick. Got a little too far. Yeah, just a little bit too far. Yeah, you got to go between the front line guys that are waiting for the onside and the one deep guy that's back. You got to kind of get it in between them so that it kind of falls in no man's land. But that time it went all the way to the deep guy. It was Bracamonte, and all he did was catch it, lie down, get an extra yard from the officials to the 20, and that's where we'll start. So first and 10 for Endicott, six-point lead. It's just over 240 remaining. And there's not much they can do. They have to get three and out, and I don't know what that was, but that it's was a, a delay of game. Yep, delay of game against Endicott. They took too long to send out the offensive unit to set things up, so they go back to their own 15. Makes it harder to get a first down, but they just want to run clock. Salve has to judiciously use the only timeout they have. Oh, do they have two? Yes, they, they have, have two. two. I'm they sorry. Fix the scoreboard. I am sorry. So they can no, so they can get this ball back, but they gotta they gotta get a three and out. And it's a handoff up the middle to Kenny. Kenny's gonna run into a a wall of Salve defenders and led they, by number five, Nick Pellucci. And they use their timeout, so they're gambling that they're going to get it done on this three-play series. Now they've left themselves with one timeout, second and 14. The ball is resting on the 16-yard line. I'll tell you, crazier things have happened. A large, large crowd on hand for this fall festival weekend, a homecoming parents look, weekend. Look at this. The entire Salve team is joining the huddle. Is going to the huddle. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> okay. The, the guys on the outside won't be able to hear a word. No, I don't think so. But got to get it together here well, and be careful of not overplaying a rush and giving up an easy pass. Yeah, that's important. I'm telling you, Endicott, as we've seen all afternoon, is a very good and very poised football team. They've converted third down plays. They've done, they've done the things they've needed to do. They haven't made very many mistakes. Paul McGonigal has done such a great job with his football team, and this is second year. And it shows this afternoon. Second out. Tight formation, pitch wide for Kenny. Looking for blocks wide, right side, and gets a decent gain out to about the 25. Grab nine yards, it's gonna be third and five, and this entire football game, and in a way this season, kind of rest, oh, he got him out to the 27. It's gonna be third and three, that was an 11 yard pickup. Ouch. They stacked it up tight then pitched it to Kenny who ran right to get just enough blocks to make it interesting to the 27. Third and three coming up. If they stop it here, you know, obviously Endicott will um, let the clock, you know, the play clock run down nearly to zero before they'll punt. But Salve would get decent position with eh, like a minute and a half to play. You know, not, not, a, not easy, but it all starts with this play. 
If they don't stop this play and Endicott gets a first down, you're going to be seeing some victory formation pretty soon. Salve is out of timeouts. They need this crowd here too. And the crowd comes to life, doing what they can. This is why they're here. Here we go. Third and three. Endicott at their own 27. Back in the back, is, is that Kenny? I believe it is. Pulaski in the shotgun, waiting the snap. Long count. He wants them to jump. They won't. There it is, the snap, the throw, and it is caught by Kenny. First down on the far side, and Endicott will keep the possession and win this ball game. John Kenny out of the backfield on the far right side, they, makes the catch, gets the first down. They sent people. They nearly got to the quarterback, but they could not. It's going to be a first and 10, and that should do it. Yeah, they can't stop the clock. Over two minutes to go. What a day for Joe Koloski. They'll still use the spread formation. Well, with Kenny in the backfield. Kind of all they know. <laughs> Minute 45 to go. I don't know why. They're not going to take a knee. Kenny. Now, the, now, the, now Selvey has to go for the ball. Got about a yard from the 32 to the 33. I don't know why they're. I don't know why they're handing off. Seriously, I mean, and and again, rushing to the line of scrimmage. Uh, okay, <laughs> second out and nine. Ball at the thirty-three. All right, now they're now they're slowing it down. Time remaining one fifteen. Yeah, Salvi has to tackle the ball, and that's about all they have. And again, they they are letting that play clock run down. Seven, six, five. Kolaski waiting, gets the snap, gives it to Kenny in the backfield, stopped at the line of scrimmage and brought down. No gain, but the clock continues to run. Matt Messner on the stop. They get to run one more play, I think. Yeah, that'll do it. Well, yeah, one more play should do it. And it is a third down and nine. Nothing Salve can do. They used up their timeouts. And they are down by six. Endicott. And Endicott is starting to celebrate. And they deserve it. They've played very, very well. They've got someone uh, 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage just in case a ball pops loose. But uh, they're going to just take a victory celebration, kneel down, and that's going to do it. The snap, the knee, and the final seconds will tick away. And Salve Regina will suffer a loss here on this big fall festival weekend as they fall to Endicott 30 to 24. A loss they could ill afford. With that loss, Salve now 0-2 in the conference, 1-4 on the season. Endicott now 2-0 in the conference, 4-1 on the season. We'll be back with post-game uh, activity here. And uh, as usual, we'll be talking with Kevin Gilmartin, the Salve head coach. It's all coming your way on WADK.
help Roger Williams involved with that. There was uh, men's and women's rugby as part of the schedule today. Salve men hosting Stonehill, the women hosting Wentworth. Um, and we had some women's tennis with Roger Williams involved with that as well coming here. So a very busy weekend. And unfortunately, this football game has a uh, not so happy ending here for the Salve Regina fans. My goodness. And um, <laughs> now it's, uh, well, we focus on a Hall of Fame ceremony tomorrow. By the way, we want to say again, congratulations to this year's inductees into the Salve Athletics Hall of Fame, Andy Andrade, uh, Katie Burrell Haskell, Joe Picozzi, and Brian Shanley. The ceremony tomorrow at Ochre Court, brunch at noon. You need tickets for that. Ceremony, induction ceremony at one at Ochre Court. You don't need tickets for that. All right, as for this football game, well, well, well. Um, and again, I, they, they had exactly 186 total yards apiece at halftime. And at the end of the game, Salve has 339, Endicott has 336 total yards. It was that much of a flip of the coin. Salve ends up losing it by six points. And I'll tell you, they couldn't really afford this one. And it just it was a great game that didn't go their way. All right, we'll take a look at the recap of the scoring and some numbers for you here during our post game. A lot of scoring in the first quarter. Salve, after causing a fumble by the quarterback with a big hit on his arm that scooted the ball back 22 yards, they took over at the 14-yard line of Endicott. And two plays later, Joey Moriella with a nine-yard touchdown run made it 7 nothing Salve. That was it for the first quarter. Into the second quarter, we went with 12.28 to go. Uh, it was Endicott that went nine plays, 80 yards, and Shane McManaway, a five-yard touchdown pass from Koloski. Uh, they, had, they hooked up a few times on that drive. That made it 7-7. With 3.03 left to go in the half, it was an 11-play, 76-yard drive that failed. I mean, I'm sorry, that stalled. But Di Carano, the good field goal kicker uh, for uh, Endicott, and in fact, he was probably your MVP if you're Endicott, kicks a 34-yard field goal, gives Endicott a 10-7 lead with three minutes to play in the half. With 18 seconds to play in the half, Salve scores. They go nine plays, 78 yards, and Joey Moriello with a 42-yard touchdown run gave Salve a 14-10 lead with 18 seconds left to go in the half. They try a short pooch kick that gets to the 40, a 15-yard penalty, and then about a 16-yard pass play. And all of a sudden, with no time left on the clock as time was expiring, they finished that two-play 31-yard drive, and DiCarano with a 46-yard field goal made it 14-13 Salve at halftime. And I'll tell you, did DiCarano have himself a game? Uh, into the second half we go, and it started out miserably for Salve. They got the ball to start the half, went three and out. Then it went back to, uh, to um, uh, Endicott, who just very quickly moved down the field. Six plays, 55 yards. Shea McManaway with a 12-yard catch from Koloski. That made it 20-14 to 14 Endicott. Salve came back, though, with 6.54 left to go in the third. They went eight plays, 47 yards, but couldn't punch it in. Angelo DeSanto had to attempt a 27-yard field goal. It was good. They got to 20-17. to 17. Into the fourth quarter we go, and this is where it all went bad for Salve. Um, with 12.21 left to go, it was a four-play, I'm sorry, an 11-play, 72-yard drive, Anthony Whiteley uh, with a five-yard touchdown pass from the backup quarterback, Bonfilio. That made it 27-17. to 17. And uh, that pretty much kind of put the game away. Salve made a kind of a last attempt in the fourth quarter, but an interception somewhere uh, deep uh, really, really caused the problem. And uh, it was a 12-play, 37-yard drive. Not so much the three points, but the fact that they just killed so much clock on that uh, on that drive. And uh, Di Carano again with a 23-yard field goal. That made it 30-17. to Salvig wasn't done with 2.47 left to go. 10 plays, 69 yards. Joey Moriello takes it from the eight to make it 30-24. to Salve just could not stop the third down play that they needed to to get, uh, to get the ball back and try to get this... Uh, get this win they lose 30 to 24 individual numbers here we go 
for Salve, Joey Moriello, an absolute spectacular day. 21 carries, 167 yards, eight yards per, and three touchdowns. Really nobody else carried the ball worth mentioning. Uh, Tyler McGovern was 20 for 33 for 160 yards, 67 yards, but two interceptions really, really hurt. Catches by Danny Hoffman. He caught four of them for 42 yards. Mike Nestor caught nine for 51. Real favorite receiver there. Joey Moriello caught four for 30. Ryan Lawton, two catches, 36 yards. And Max DeVito had a catch for eight. Uh, so for Salve, 25 carries, 172 yards on the ground, 167 of them by Moriello. 20 for 33 passing, 167 more yards. They had 339 total yards. We'll get to Endicott right after you talk to the coach. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even see him. You yeah, saw him. I, I saw him. Okay, well. Yeah, here we are. Let me untangle my wires here and give you a chance look to. The, look at the total yards. 339 for you, 336 for them. Just amazing. Penalties. So. You don't have that. What's that? Penalties. No. Uh, we didn't. We didn't. That's the freaking difference. Okay. Here is Kevin Gilmartin. Yeah, it was a, it was a killer. Um, <laughs> Well, what are the first things that come to your mind when you want to, when, when we talk about this thing? Well, it's a tight game, and it comes down to the little things. You know, I mean, whether, whether it's, a, it's a penalty here, uh, too many guys on the field, you know, having to take timeouts because we, we couldn't get people subbed in and off. Um, it's the little things that we got to take care of. You know, whenever it's a tight game in tight situations, it's all those little things that make the world a difference. And, uh, you know, it's a little bounce here, a little bounce there. Didn't work out for our way. Well, you knew coming in, this is a passing team. And yep. uh, that's, a, that's a tough tough program to stop the, the way you were trying to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, every now and then, you know, you slowed them down. You got off to a great start. Guys, the way it started, I said, wow, this is looking really good. But, you know, they're a tough team. They're, they're yeah, no, I thought we had it. I mean, like, and, you know, you look at the end there, that uh, their final touchdown, the difference maker – Ball bounces, you yeah. know, and that's oh, and uh, absolutely, <laughs> you know, and that's like, all right, what are you gonna do? You just got to rally back, you know. I mean, you don't control that, you can only complain about the things you control. You always talk about, you know, handle your business, but you know, it's tough when those little things you know, don't go your way because of a, a little bounce that somebody misses. Yeah, yeah. You, you may not want to talk about this, but there was a play on there, there was something that happened on their touchdown play that that up, upset your sideline. What did you? Did oh, you, it was a legal procedure, okay. There's four guys moving. Okay. Uh, they went fast tempo, and the rule is is that everybody's got to be set for a full second, and there wasn't. Okay. You know, I, and I even warned them whenever they go fast tempo that they don't get everybody set. I said that to them before the game, and it didn't get called, and it's like, that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay. Um, but, you know, you can't – You it sounds like sour grapes, you know, because we lost, but at the same time, you know, we just – you can't let – you can't put the ball on the rest – hands to make the decision sure. so you sure. got to play better than that yeah i, I just didn't see mm -hmm. what it was i just right. kind of wanted to pick it up i want to talk about some positives now mm -hmm. let's start with joey joey's a good football player describe what <laughs> why is he so good and he's only 5 8 160 for crying out loud it's not the dog in the, it's not the size of the dog in the fight but the fight in the dog yeah. <laughs> and he definitely has some fight in his dog uh but at the same time i mean he has uh you know over 150 yards rushing today and you know you it's his effort. It's his working hard, and he's a great player. But at the same time, there's uh, there's five other guys uh, that's in front of him that's uh, that are working hard pretty good too well, that's as well. What I wanted to get mm -hmm. to eventually, guys, yeah. because we don't get a chance to talk about them a lot. But uh, the guys up in front of him, you know, Mike Saunders in the middle, and mm -hmm. the guys on the other side, and Dewey, and yeah. uh, everybody. I mean, uh, they're giving him the, the, just the, that seam he needs. Right. And and from there, Joey takes over. Absolutely. But I, I yeah. want to give credit to those guys. Like Absolutely. No, it's uh, it's Mike Saunders inside. Then the guards are uh, Kyle Wisniewski and Steve Dewey. And then uh, the tackles, uh, uh, Pete Noonan and uh, Elian Telford. I yeah. mean, they're they're great football players. And uh, they're pushing teams. And, I mean, like, uh, I think Endicott was uh, – they were leading the conference in, uh, you know, uh, yards that they were giving up and, and points. And, uh, you know, our whole line was pushing them. Mm -hmm. Um unexpectedly impressing the crap out of me, Zach Katerius. Mm -hmm. um, he was, uh, he made the first big play of the game, first yeah. of all, uh -huh. but then he, uh, he kept making big plays all the way along. Uh, what's, who is this guy, Zach Katerius? Exactly. Uh, he's an inside linebacker. He backs up uh, Matt Mester and Drew Ballester. They're very good football players. And so we said, uh, let's find a place to put him on the field. So we just got him on as a defensive end just to, uh, to let him go, you know, and uh, he did. He made plays. And, uh, you know, it was, it was great to see somebody step up like that. First real game where he was getting 
a lot of playing time, and he 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 shined. He yeah, he, mm-hmm. he took advantage of it. Definitely proud of him. Um, I, I we talk about Matt and Drew a lot because they deserved to be talked about. Mm-hmm. Two real strong leaders, Balistrieri and Messner. Um, they are your your leaders out there, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, then the interior of the D-line as well, uh, Nick Pellucci and uh, Jack Elfie as well. You know, I mean, that whole interior right there is is pretty pretty good sight. I thought I saw, only because I don't always see everything, that happens a lot, Suki more involved than I've seen him before mm-hmm. as far as tackles and affecting yeah. plays. Yeah, yeah, he made some plays. He definitely uh, he got a couple of TFLs, I think, today, which is always a good thing to see. Yeah. Uh, and that's proud to see that somebody's senior year, somebody that hasn't been on the field, much at all his first three years, and then you know this is his, uh, his vision quest that, uh, to get out on that field that senior year, and he he started to make some plays. All right, when mm-hmm. we face the reality of two <coughs> conference losses already, mm-hmm. yes. Now you get a bye week mm-hmm. to kind of catch your breath, maybe heal up a few people, and then you're going to come back and take on Western New England on the road. Absolutely. Uh, there's a challenge for you. Always a challenge. I mean, the conference is very good this year. I mean, that's the thing that uh, that we've been saying is the conference has been building. Um, it's been, you know, getting better every year for the last five years. And I've been saying that, you know, a two-loss team couldn't win the conference, uh, you know, because who knows what's going to happen. Endicott, West New England, Hudson. You know, hudson has been to the NCAAs the last couple of years. Uh, Nichols, you know, beat us last week. So who knows what's going on with them, you know. And then uh, Curry and UNE are the rising teams. So, and I think Becker is 2-2 uh, two and two right now, so. So it's a good conference. It's something yeah. that I'm proud of to be a part of this conference. And uh, you know, but we gotta uh, we gotta start winning in the conference. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, yeah. if that balance is there and somewhat of that parity is there, then you got to repeat what you did last year. No yeah. problem. Exactly. Win five in a row. Get it done. <laughs> right. <It's> so simple. <laughs> and that's what it is. I mean, it's, sometimes it takes a little time for teams to get rolling, and hopefully we start rolling. You know, and you can see like we're we're just a couple of steps away from it clicking. And uh, you know, we gotta we gotta start clicking. You yeah. know, but uh, we're not gonna let up. Yeah, and I think that's the beautiful thing about it. Even like this game, you know, it came down to the end, you know, and who knows what would happen. Mm-hmm. And don't you, Jim, feel like I do that Kevin Gilmartin looks very imposing in black? <laughs> uh, sure. You know, like scary. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> trying to help you build yeah. it. <laughs> black is slimming for me. Is that what it is? <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, it's working. <laughs> Kevin, mm-hmm. tough loss. Yes. But I know you're going to bring him back. Absolutely, we'll try. All right. Uh-huh. So thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Always a good time talking to you guys, even on tough days like this. Yeah. All right, kiddo. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Take care. All right. All right. That's Kevin Gilmartin, <laughs> the head coach of the South Bay Seahawks, who indeed suffer a tough loss. We are going to take our last time out and be right back with you on WADK.